today's going to be uh, blogs and, and websites. And of course, we're joined by our esteemed CEO. Uh, as you can see, he's a little bit tense from the week that he's had and his kids, uh, Corey. And of course, we also have, uh, you know, Shanice. But before we uh, really get into everything, you know, I think we should kind of kind of talk about some of the, the, the things that are in the news and kind of what jumps out first for me is, did you catch, Corey, where uh, Walmart in certain markets is starting to play with that same-day delivery using their on online portals? Uh, you can actually, you, yeah. you got that? Yeah, I did see that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think earlier this, earlier, a few months ago, I posted something where, you know, it was a joke, but uh, Amazon was going to attempt to uh, to uh, go back in the future. <laughs> you know, they were going to go into the past and read your mind and have it there, you know, right when you decide you wanted to get it. But, uh, yeah, I did see that, uh, that Walmart was going to do that. Actually, I think it's a good deal, you know. Um, more interesting, Walmart is getting into banking. Well, they've been, they've kind of, Played with banking for a while, though. Yeah, um, they're coming out with yeah. their, own, their own credit card, um, and are actually gonna throw their hat in the ring as a financial institution. Well, they they've been one in like Mexico and some of the other countries for a while. I see. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know. You know. I, I guess it makes sense to them. I mean. From a business standpoint, so many people do so much business with Walmart. If, you know, why not? I mean, why not? I guess. Well, I mean, why why not? You know, we can sell the stuff to you, and we can finance it too. You know, it's kind of like if you think back, that's kind of the models that the uh, that the automobile industry followed. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I th I think they'll be good at it. Um, you know, mark, uh, marketing wise, you know, Walmart kind of has this built in, you know, they have, they have built in customers. So, um, I think it'll be successful if they decide to get into it. But I think that, you know, the same day shipping is, is going to be beautiful uh, for a lot of people. It might hurt Amazon. And, I, and maybe that's why, you know, Amazon is, um, I, I think that's their target in that particular scenario. Well, they they have to do something to uh, start competing and strengthening their their online presence. You know, just like I kind of have a uh, that show coming up uh, in December. That's you know going to talk about. I think it's December fourteenth. Uh, holiday marketing and, and shopping, mm -hmm. because you know people underestimate the effect uh, that the online retailers have had on traditional stores. I mean, if you remember when you go, when you drive back past those shopping plazas and that, that growing up used to be full. Yes. And now they're like, some of them are empty, some of them are gone, some of them have been torn down. I mean, the, the online has had a dramatic effect on traditional retail. Well, yeah. Um, well, just this week, Best Buy announced that they were going to match Amazon price for the holidays. As a matter of fact, it's already started. Um, and Best Buy has been one of those retailers that have been tremendously affected uh, kind of by the Amazon wave. So this year they're saying they're going to fight back and they're actually going to match Amazon online pricing, which is huge also. That is a really big deal. Uh, well, it, it's that they can match it, but then again they can't because – Depending on like your membership, you know, it's like if you have Prime, you know, it's depending. You don't have the taxes, and you know, you still get it. So they can match the price, but then Amazon still, even though they have to pay tax, they still have enough of a margin in it to where they aren't adding the tax in. It's kind of included in the price, which is how they're getting around some stuff. Yeah, but with Best Buy, you can get it and take it home. That's yeah, <laughs> you know. That, that's a big one right there. You know? Well, that, that, that's a big one. The, the challenge is going to be for them to be able to match uh, Amazon selection. That I don't think they can do at all. I mean, that's just that's, that's an issue. If you're still going to have to order it online, 
um, whatever it is you're getting from Best Buy, you're not going to, I don't think they're going to be able to match Amazon's performance on that end. Um, I, I just don't think so. I mean, Amazon just knows, they just know how to do online. They just, they got it down. Well, they, they've had they've had many years of practice, and and well, we're talking about the news, but just to kind of diverge a little bit and even bring up something we talked about earlier, I want to include in this one the news in terms of TV. You know that show Revolution we were talking about earlier, and also the um, what is it that they're advertising now? Also that Z Box to try and make TV more interactive, and for you to use your smartphones and all that to interact with the shows and vote and. All of this, and I don't know how I feel about that. I think it's gimmicky. Um, number one, I think I, you know, ITV is one of those bus. Hey, yep, bye. Thank you. See you later. See, this is the one, one of the ones that was calling me that you yeah. should. You should just let them come on. They want to participate anyway. He's, he's gonna take over. He's gonna take over. <laughs> That's okay. Going to already had. I still remember that call. Do right. Do right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's go take over. Um, yeah, I don't. I you know I've always said you know Hi, I've always Nanny. kind of. Hi, Nanny. That's not Nanny. She looks like Nanny, huh? He he thinks you his auntie. Yeah, so, bring him on. Let him let let her see who, who's talking. <sighs> this is Kai. Say hi. Hi. Yeah. He thinks you is Nanny. <laughs> oh. That's my Nanny. Are you sure? <laughs> He's not sure. He's definitely not sure. I never noticed it, but you actually kind of look like it. Oh, so, wow. He wanted to tell his mom. Yeah, it's it's tricking. A, uh, it's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um... Yeah, interactive TV, ITV, um, it, it, more of a buzzword than I think is going to be something that mainstream people are going to use. It's been around in certain certain little ways, you know. Um, I recall a few years ago, did a um, was doing some uh, beta testing for TiVo, and uh, they sent out a box, and uh, this box had all this extras, uh, interactivity on it. Um, personally, I found it very annoying. When I want to watch TV, I just want to watch TV. That's it. I don't want to do nothing else. I just want to watch TV. I don't want to interact with the television. You know, I don't want to, I, I don't want to be a part of it. You know, I just want to watch it. You know, maybe I'm lazy that way, but I don't think it's really going to be something that catches on, you know, too much. I like the interactivity in sports where, you know, if I'm watching a game, maybe, you know, interactive stats, things of that sort. I see some partial um, implementation in that, but overall, I don't, I don't, personally, I don't, I don't get it. I don't think it's going to work. Well, I, I see some for the, those of you that are sports buffs, but, you know, all that, well, I take it maybe for some of these shows like um, the Idol and that kind of stuff to where they're trying to vote and do some other things. Maybe. Um, maybe. Oh, well, look who popped in. Let's go. Phillip's here. What's up? Man? He's not playing golf. Ow. I just finished, man. I just finished. <laughs> yeah, I just finished. Oh, we got, we got somebody uh, else? Yeah, oh. this, is, this is my uh, buddy that you know, came in. How are you? Oh wow! Yeah, oh Lee, Lee, I oh, thought Lee you were going. Oh, you're Lee's at the game. Lee's mobile. <laughs> yeah, Lee's at the hockey game. Oh, you at the hockey game, Lee? I want to see a fight. Nah, <laughs> what's up, Shanice? Hi, Philip. <laughs> Long time no here, girl. I know. Lee I know. is actually at the hockey game. He's giving us a yeah. View. All right, got That's some good awesome. seats too. Good seat. Yeah, he's at the hockey game with his son. <laughs> but um, yeah, but the the reason that I brought up the the TV show Revolution uh, uh, along with that Z box, but more of the Revolution is being technology people. 
even though I see so many flaws in the show, mm -hmm. you know, just the, the thought of what would life be like without electricity because, you know, our lives are kind of dependent on technology and it takes power to make our toys work. Well, I don't yeah. know. I got a new toy today. Got me a brand new tailor made. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Doesn't require any electricity, huh? Plug in. Swing power. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving the electronics, man. I'm gonna go buy me 400 acres and build me my own golf course. Mm -hmm. Fifteen million dollars. Oh Lord, Dad. Anybody want to invest in me? Um, oh no. well, see, so you're looking for investors now. See. Yeah, you know the thing about that. A lot of the golf clubs, um, the, not golf club, the country clubs. There, a lot of them are going through foreclosures right now. Yep, they sure are. Yep, you can get a good country club. You can buy a good golf course right now for about five million dollars. Yeah. Well, Garcia, Daniel Garcia came on and he, yeah, you know, he left. He sent me a note offline. He said, "Can I come in?" He said, "I, I mainly speak Spanish." I said, "You can come in, leave, come back when you want to." Um, it's just him getting used to, um, you know, to everything. Whoa. Okay, hold on. Hello. So, how's Maryland treating you, Janice? Oh, hey. Maryland is Maryland. How are you? I hear you. Hey, what do you think about question yeah. seven? Oh, dear. Um, I don't think that there's enough information right now. Hey, um, hey Corey. Yes. Your, your, your son just called me again. Uh, my sister says she's voting for question seven. <laughs> and I'm on the fence. I don't have my phone. Hold on. <laughs> question seven. I mean, if you look at all the other states mm -hmm. who have all these casinos and say that they're going to give to uh, the schools. Yeah. It's the same companies who are building these casinos. That's so, true. Are they given to the schools? Well, like, if you look at those states, they have some of the worst school systems in the, the nation. Worst school systems. Exactly. Jersey? Terrible school systems. Nevada. Nevada? I wouldn't <laughs> Leave a a, a doo doo stain in the vibe. <laughs> I wouldn't. See, you got to set Corey off. <laughs> I mean, I live in Vegas. I know about the school system. No, it's not good. The school systems are horrible there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hawaii yeah. school systems are horrible. And, you know, we already have what four um, areas with casinos. We mm -hmm. just got one in Arundel County. Now, and are they given to the schools? No, we just no. had some cutbacks. Bingo! That's what I'm trying to say. Because my, my cousin works for uh, they did. PG County. She's a, she's a teacher out there. Me too. I'm in PG County. Oh, are you where at? Yeah, I'm at Flowers. Flowers. That's cool. She, oh, no, she's at uh, Benjamin... Tasker. Benjamin Tasker. Yeah. 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 So yeah, she's like, nah, I don't want to do no, no questions. Seven. I don't trust these people. I don't trust them. No, 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 no. You know, it's, and I don't want to get into the whole thing with, um, you know, the raises and stuff. They just had us vote on something. But I'm like, I don't trust you. Nope, I don't blame you. No, so. I don't blame you. Here you go, girls and boys. <laughs> yeah. Brand new. Brand new. I haven't even tried them yet. That's a, that's I broke a, my. That's I broke a my show, Phil. That's a different show, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get that show um, together? Yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> we, we should get that show together. We we can do a hangout uh, later on about Phil. You know, Phil and golf. Yeah, you know, this is Phil's man. golf hour. That's this is. The, I'm thinking about doing a golf blog. Yeah. <laughs> well, perfect. Well, night. That's what we're talking about tonight. That's what we're talking about tonight. <laughs> yeah. Want to host you know, We were talking about education, and I don't know. And and we were talking about news. Hi, we were talking about news. And was it Minnesota? They made it illegal to have free online courses. I what? Think it was Minnesota. It was one of those states. I think it was Minnesota, and it was all over Coursera. 
I haven't heard that. What? Wow. How could you make it was it illegal? today or yesterday they made the decision? How could you? How, make how it are you going to make it uh, illegal to do yeah. to do they basically? Did. How do you enforce that? How do you enforce that? I I don't know, but it's illegal. Now now See that that now, Corey. I know you pick about you know, on me because I like my keyboards, but that's kind of crazy. You know, it's that you know. It, it's basically like okay, you know, here it is. Here's a way actually for you to generate more revenue mm -hmm. and basically use the instructor's time more effectively. And you're like, uh, no, no, not gonna do it. I don't get it. I, I'd have to get some more information on that because I, I can't. Number one, I don't know how you would enforce that, uh, or if you can, you, le oh, or if you can legally can enforce it. Soda. Well, no, you can enforce it actually, but you'd literally end up going in and having somebody at each of the the universities and schools going, nah, -uh. we're taking Minnesota all this equipment out. Declares free online college courses illegal. Yeah, let you me put it in chat. You can't declare. You can't declare something legal illegal if it's legal. That's that's not. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in Minnesota, but number they got one, something good. They, they, they obviously got that's some. That's outside some of your jurisdiction. Drugs. Seriously, that's that's outside of your jurisdiction to declare something online illegal. Other hey, than I just played golf with the guy who owns Huffington Post. You gonna keep working that in here, huh? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, Does Taylor made have you. You got some kind of agreement going on with Taylor, you know? No, AOL owns Huff. They just bought Huffington Post, mm -hmm. and uh, one they? of my golf partners uh, oh, bought it a while back. Is yeah. uh, is one of the big corporates of Huffington of AOL, and he was telling me they just bought Huffington Post. But yeah, you can't make that illegal. That'd be like making the internet illegal. It's not China. Yeah. Exactly. So they bought Does Huffington Post with the family? <laughs> Dude, that, that happened almost a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's not new news. That's old news there. Um, well, uh, getting back into the into the, the, the new news, no, um, you know, of course, our, our favorite kind of topic, uh, Windows 8 and Windows <laughs> phones and... Um, all this other stuff, it's it's almost here. Is everybody holding their breath in baited excitement? Well, I like that commercial Windows has out for their new uh, touchpad. Did you, Mark, Mark, Mark huh? Benioff. You know who Mark Benioff is? Uh -uh. Mark, Mark Benioff is the CEO of Salesforce.com. His recent statements, and, and Mark is a very outspoken dude. He says a lot of things about a lot of different people. Um, but this was a statement he made to Business Insider just earlier today. Mark Benioff says Windows 8 is going to be the end of Windows. Period. What? Wow. The end. <laughs> this was in a an interview he gave to Business Insider earlier today. Um so needless to say, Mark Benioff is not a friend of Windows 8. He does not believe in it, and he believes it's going to be the end of Windows as we know it. Um, I happen to somewhat agree with Mark. I wouldn't go as a drastic as drastic as to say it is the end, but I've been saying this for months. You know, cousin was saying I, it's the perfect storm. Window, you know, Microsoft has the perfect ingredients for that giant storm um, that's happening right now. You get the convergence of tablets and mobile marketing going, the decline of PC sales, you introduce a brand new operating system that is very questionable into the game, and all of a sudden, you have the, the makings of a possible nightmare. That's only if you're using Windows. Only if you're using well. Here's the thing, though. Um, I'm a BSD man myself. And I'm right with you. I don't use BSD, but I'm OS 10. We got a little BSD in our DNA, so yeah. there we go. But here's the problem, though. The effects 
of Windows 8 or Windows or Microsoft on the ecosystem of the of the desktop is going to be it can be a catastrophic situation because of the entire ecosystem that circulate that circulates around it. Intel, um, all the the hardware manufacturers, um, the OEMs. Um, it is not just all about Windows in that particular situation. There's an entire ecosystem that can collapse, and it's already having a hard time. So, on that sense, you need to root for, if you will, that not to happen. Um, but I think Microsoft made a mistake, and I think it was very selfish of them to make this mistake. And I guess Mark Benioff also thinks they're making a mistake. So, what are you thinking, cuz? I mean, I, I, is that extreme? I mean, I, I, you know, on one end, it's not going to happen overnight, but I think he's, I think he's right in, in some essence. Well, I got, I got an email talking about here, you know, and, and see, here's the thing, and it's, it's classic Microsoft. You know, I think I forwarded it to you of where <coughs> the regional person invited me to kind of a launching party of all the new Windows stuff. Except they sent it to me, what, two days after the event where the I would go to was over? <laughs> what? Great job, Microsoft. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, the, I'm, the, I'm scared awesome. going, wow. You know, and, you know, but it, it's, it's, to me, it was like an omen. It, you know, I sat there and thought about it, and I was like, you know, it's classic Microsoft. It's, we're going to come late to the game. Mm -hmm. And and yet you, we still expect you to uh, bend over backwards because, you know, we're – and I've been saying this for years. Microsoft's problem is it's been resting on its laurels. It, ha it has had for years, and this is before the advent of, you know, people call them smartphones, but let's just call them microcomputers, what they really are, before the advent of this technology. They were the big dog. And they saw that, and they see the handwriting on the wall, and that if they don't get into these markets, that you know they're going to basically become you know non-relevant. But see, here's the the problem: by the time you realize that, you've al it's already happened. You already re irrelevant. Exactly. You yeah. By the time yeah, they got I'm, the memo, the, the the party was over. Just like when they sent you your memo out, the party was over. Uh, that's kind of what's going yeah, on with them. It, yeah. It, it's like they're trying, you know, they're trying to get into it. And then what makes it worse is they're not just trying to get into the tablet market and into, into the mobile market. They're actually trying to make it seem like, hey, you know, this is such a great thing and experience. We want you to use it on your desktop and, and on your notebook. And, and we, we talked about this earlier, too, in terms of Microsoft. In doing this, what they what they're doing is... You know, when we talked about tablet PCs and all that, you know, and it's funny how when you talk about the history, even some of the historians skip over what Microsoft did because that's about how relevant it is. You know, they're bringing back their convertibles and all this stuff again for Windows 8. And their convertibles sucked when they had them the first time. They did. You know, are they suddenly going to be better this time out? Because now, granted, you have a... a better operating system than what you had the first time out, but I mean it didn't work because people didn't get it. And I don't think that they'll necessarily get it this time. Well, I think the yeah. problem is the problem is not the people. Uh, the problem is Microsoft doesn't get it. Um, them bringing Windows 8 to the desktop is like assisted suicide. I mean, <laughs> we, we already know the, you know, the, the desktop is on it's on the decline, it's on its deathbed. I think this is Microsoft saying, we're just going to help you pull the plug on it. Well, you know? well it, uh, actually, I think that it could be an issue of Microsoft hit with this ego being what it is, thinking Hold because on. we're Microsoft, if we think if we think it's still good and, vi and viable, then other people are going to believe us. You know, it, to the point even Intel's like, you know, what? Yeah. And they've kind of backed no off of it a little bit for a public for publicity's sake, but even them, they're like, it's dead. Oh, Corey, you said that the desktop is dead. I'm saying the desktop is dead, and I'm saying that Microsoft is is attempting to help kill it off. I don't oh, think I the think desktop is dead. Well, when's the last time you've been in Best Buy? 
When's the last time you've been in any big box retail store? Seen a desktop on the shelf lately? Oh, uh, well, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're yeah. using a laptop right now, aren't you? Hush your mouth, woman. Hush your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the numbers, the numbers are out. By 2015, by 2015, uh, mobile, which would be laptops and all of that, out, the laptops have been outselling desktops for about seven years now, seven years in a row. So by 2015, there will be more of everything else in the world than desktops. So, and that we're not even including mobile phones in that. You know, that's that that doesn't even count because mobile phones have already overtaken the desktop. So we can't even put that into the mix. So, and the numbers will never reverse. They will never go back. Once oh no, I agree over. with you on that. So yeah. yes, it is dying. <laughs> uh, it, it's dying, but see that that's well, kind of works, actually. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah, you know, that's kind of a good segue into, you know, two other kind of related but separate items in the news, one with Android and another one with, uh, you know, iPad, and that's both the uh, the iPad mini and the S3 mini. The, the S3 mini, by the way, is for a lot of people a, a disappointment because they were hoping that it would inherit some of the genetics of, you know, the, the S3 itself. And they're like, okay, lower resolution screen, less powerful processor. They're like, it doesn't even deserve to be called an S3. Because as opposed to a high end, they're like, you basically give something, gave a flagship name to a mediocre product. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, would, I would have to agree with that. Um, I, I don't know what Samsung was thinking. Um, number one, that seven inch market is just about to become uh, ridiculously, I, I think actually in the next year or two, the seven inch market will be the prime market and the 10 inch tablets will become kind of almost like desktops. Yeah. I think seven, seven, to, seven to eight inches, I think is, that's, the, the, that's the, the, the killer space to be in. 10 inch, if you've owned a 10 inch tablet, they're a little on the big side. They, after a while, they feel like maybe it's a little, I could do with a little less, you know? Unless you're kind of using it as your desktop replacement, in which case it kind of sits there and that's it, mm -hmm. which some people might do. Some people, yeah, but, well, you I know, mean, yeah. The hard drive, you can't, there's no space. I mean, how you, with all these 10 inch and 7 inch, I mean, we got the iPads here. Uh, everybody's still going to have to use external hard drives. External DVDs or some sort. But who is using DVDs anymore? Who, I mean, seriously, DVDs are dead too. It's, we're just counting it down. We're just, I mean, the tombstone, yeah. we've already put the tombstone up for it. It's just, it's just a matter of time. Netflix pretty much made sure that the DVD mm -hmm. is going is to die very shortly. And so then the digital downloads for software. Yeah. yeah. The only reason you can still get a DVD is because the studios themselves do not want to go completely digital, digital. just yet. They, they're fighting it, but this fight will be lost. Oh, it's, yeah. It, it will be lost. I, like I, I don't even understand why they're fighting it this long, to be honest with you. Because uh, they're still, the same they're reason still they did with the, with, the, with the music and that kind of stuff, and probably the same reason the Nets did in... Um, you know, made the online learning I illegal. Uh, it's like in Corey, you and I go back and forth about this a lot. Is you know, people get to a certain age and they just they don't like change. This is what's always been. I don't want to learn this. And yeah. they, you know, if they're, they don't realize that they're planning their own obsolescence if exactly. they don't deal with change. Exactly. Well, but see, they've already done it. That's what's happened to the phone companies. The phone companies actually were. You know, before the satellite TVs and all of this came out, the phone companies were running fiber like crazy. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the CEOs were like, well, wait a minute, we have to stop this. I mean, they did it to themselves. Mm -hmm. They actually opened, opened the door for them to have competition, whereas if they had kept running the fiber and took fiber to everybody's houses, That's you know, they would have basically had it sold, sold up. Mm -hmm. That's called deregulation. Yeah. 
But, you know, the writing is on the wall for certain things. You know, when's the last time you, you know, have you seen a Sam Goody's lately? Have you seen a blockbuster or a Hollywood video? It, let it go. It's gone. It's dead. You ain't seen them and they ain't coming back. You know, well, they're, they're going the way of the uh, VHS. I still have a VHS player someplace. I do, too. Oh, wow. I have one in my classroom. I mean, you, you have one. But you don't use it. You don't no. use it. It's, no, it's kind of like a memorial, right? You know, it's a, it's a tombstone. That's yeah. what it is. Mine's a $500 tombstone. From it. <laughs> you know? You might have a Betamax laying around. Uh, yeah, my, my mine basically has got the Dolby B. It's got the, I mean, it's it's a it's a sick thing, it, and it's a dual. I could actually um dub, uh, burn DVDs from my um VHS if I wanted to dub them. That's why I got it back when I did all those years ago, so I could convert the stuff. Yeah. Now, but man, yeah, it seems ridiculous now. I mean, honestly. I, no, all the stuff I, I, I is in. Gotta talk about, I got to talk about an article real quick, though, that the New York Times did. Because, you know, Shanice was over there smiling. So this, this, is, this is for you, Shanice. I got to know if this is true. Uh -huh. The New York Times wrote an article that says, BlackBerry users feel really oh, cool for crying out loud. And <laughs> this, this, this is the New York Times wrote it, right? I mean, you still you use the BlackBerry? I thought you was broke. <laughs> See? I know what I've been away for a while, baby, but dog on. Is it I mean, are we are we too rough on Blackberry users? Are you guys getting really like hurt feelings about what well, did do you see the, the leak of their of their new OS that they, they promptly yes. took down? Yes. They yeah. leaked it, that it on purpose. Very, it was very Android like to me. Yes. They did that on purpose. Yes, it was very Android like. Um the problem is when are we gonna see it? Yeah. <laughs> we're not we're gonna see it when they sell Blackberry to another company. That's when yeah. we're gonna see it. I mean they, they should be close to running out of money here. You know, they're getting dangerously close to where Apple was before they bought Steve Jobs back. Apple had about four hundred million in the bank before they bought Steve Jobs back. And they pretty much went broke bringing him back. Yeah, four hundred no. million is is not a lot of money. That's not a lot of money. Not, no, not at all. that kind of company. Well, they they were about a month from filing bankruptcy. You know, they were about a month yeah. away from filing bankruptcy. So BlackBerry has to be somewhere close. What can they do? I mean, besides nothing, because that's what I think right now. But besides nothing, what can they do? Who? Blackberry? Blackberry, Ram. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what they could have done, but it's too late now. It's, it's too late now. What Blackberry could have done is Blackberry could have borrowed Android, put their own interface on top of it, like TouchWiz, like whatever, whatever, brought their own enterprise software to it, and put some phones out. That's what they could have done. But they were hard-headed, and they decided they wanted to do it their way, and that's what happens when you have two CEOs and you know, that's like having split personalities, right? You can't. Mm -hmm. They're you know, bipolar. I, it's, it's a bipolar like, organization. Um, so that's what they could have done. You know, I mean, that would have saved them what? Development costs? Mm -hmm. from trying to develop their own operating system. They could have put that money back into, uh, and, and I would even say this, don't even develop your own phones. Um, contract HTC out. You know, get, you know, contract some of these other phone makers out rebrand them you know HTC was you know they've been doing that for years where they will allow you to rebrand their phone why are you over there trying to remake the wheel it's too late it's way too late in the game to be trying to come up with something brand new where you don't have any you're bleeding red you know it's well it's too late in this game but there's always a new game coming man Okay, I don't know what it is for them, though. I don't know oh, what they're Yeah, they're I agree with that. I don't know what it is, but do you agree with me, though? I mean, I think oh, there's, I think. Oh, there, there, there's always a new game. Yeah. But, oh. but, the, but, but the problem is, when the new game comes, are you even in the running to oh, compete? Are you running? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and I don't, know I don't think they will be. I don't know that there's a race, so no, they're not in the running. Well, yeah. it's, 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 it's not the same thing as it was, you know, four or five years ago. You know, the heavyweights that are running 
this game, there's some serious heavyweights. I mean, seriously, Microsoft can't even get into this game. Nope. You know, it's like the, the heavyweights, they're completely adaptable. Yes. Rim is not. They're not because they, they never took the time to build that ecosystem up. Bingo. You know, that's you know, that's you're still here talking about Microsoft not being a heavyweight. Microsoft actually, if they got some new, some but, new blood. But you said if. Yeah. You said if. They need to get some new. They need to get some Steve Jobs blood and they, make a new make a new game. They need to get rid of Bomber. Bomber's old. He's never been a visionary. Bingo. And he really doesn't get it. He just he's really he just really does not get it. And it's I have to say this, it's the board of directors fault because they could they should have put Bomber in the corner a long time ago. Mm -hmm. You know, he should yeah, have put on time. I, 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 th I think they're scared of him, to be honest with you. But he's he's a little crazy. Bomber's a little nuts. You know? I, I think if they got rid of him, they were worried he'd go postal in a board meeting. Nah, ha, 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 ha. That's why you have security. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Or you bring you, some you of these. You know going to do it, just have security sitting there. Just, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, he has to go, though. Bomber is part of the problem. Number one, he's, uh, I think Bomber's about 60, what, 64, 65. They need a 35-year-old. Yeah, this is a yeah, yeah, for, To run technology, you need somebody that, that's actually kind of too old to be running what's supposed to be. Yeah. But it's, you purport yourself as a cutting-edge technology company, and you can't be... You know, you can't be that old, and really, you can't have never been a technologist. I mean, and dude wasn't—he wasn't a hardware. He wasn't a software. He was not even—he was not any kind of technologist whatsoever. No, he was a bean counter. You know, he, he's a bean counter. You know, I, yeah. I, I wrote—I wrote an article about Microsoft like three years ago. You know, on my blog, <laughs> and I called Microsoft the new Bu new Buick. <laughs> they are the new Buick. You know which nobody really wants to be the new Buick. You know, Buick was safe, it was reliable, it was boring. And it was ugly. And it was ugly, <laughs> you know. But they sold Buicks to old people, you know, because, you know, they, they remember the, the, the good old days of Buick, right? So Microsoft has now become the good old Buick of technology. So what you're saying is, sorry for interrupting, the Buicks, was sold to the people who were loyal to Buick. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and I, I, I've also referenced Microsoft as the old dude in the club. You know. The, oh yeah. Oh man, are. why you even want to go there? I did. I have. I have. I have images of that burnt in my head from when I was in college. Uh, Here's this old dude, you do. know, and I was I was like young, you know, I'm like I'm like nineteen, twenty years old, and here's this like somebody who's a little bit younger than I am now up in the club trying to talk and trying to rap and pick up what I'm like trying to throw the rap just, on Shanice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you don't even look like you belong in here. Yeah, yo, yo man, you know, and he's trying to talk slag and I'm like, dude, you just Selling. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's Microsoft. They they are the old people in the, they're the old dude in the club. Gold chain, you know, shirt open, hair hanging out. You oh. know. Hit the Febreze under the oh. you know, Get them, Shanice. With Get the old Shanice. spice. You know, they got the old spice jumping oh, off. Dude, you know? there was one there was one guy I remember that he basically the thing that always jumped out when I saw him is he smelled like mothballs. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> And now, and now, now we are that old man in the club. You no, I ain't, I'm that old man, but I ain't in the club. I ain't in the club. I ain't yeah. You gotta know your lane. You gotta stay in your lane. Stay That's in your lane. lane. Stay in your lane. You know. Yeah. If if I if I ever if you see me in a club, it's I had to go someplace, and I heard what a Corey's kids was out there acting up, and I wanted to snatch her out, snatch him or her out. Get get out of here. You don't belong here. Yeah, you should never be in the clubs with your kids. That's That's cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be in there with them unless it is to get them out. To my mother. Exactly. Exactly. So, but I, you know. I, Rim, I think Rim overnight became the old dude in the club. Mm -hmm. You know, 
in the wrong type of suit. You know, you in the suit, you got your your executive wardrobe on, but you're in the club. You know, that's where the climate changed to. You know, the commercial phones or the you know the, the consumer phones. You know, you can go both ways. You know, I can go in, I can go into the office. I can go home. I feel comfortable. Well, at the end of the day, Blackberry they made that money. Blackberry wasn't made America. that way. What's that? At the end of the day, they've made their money, and that's all that matters to them. But they're losing it. They're 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 minutes away from filing bankruptcy. So it's got to be more. It's, you can't just make your money. You got to continue to make your you money. Continue. Well, that, you got to You got to continue. But the, 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 let's take that and take it off of BlackBerry and, the, and then kind of switch it uh, a little bit, talking about a company that's you know, uh, basically getting beat up a little bit. And I'm not talking Apple. We'll come back to Apple later. I'm talking Verizon. Well, <laughs> you know, and they've kind of gotten, they're, they're, they're starting to get dinged for what, not only for, for their data plans, but what they're starting to do with their phones. Because you know how everybody beats up on other companies and talk about, well, you've locked us out. You know, you do this. And Verizon's getting beat up because of all the monitoring in that. And I mean, what what was I have to find the article, but one of the executives made a statement of, yeah, we know exactly what everybody looks at, what they do, and we can control it, and this and that. And it's starting. And Verizon's starting to piss people off. Yeah, they're, they're not the only ones that are doing it. They're just the ones that are. They're just the ones that are stupid enough to own up to it. Um, those of us that know, if you if you're in the like, um, you know, the ROM community, um, you know, the hacking community, if you will, for your phone, you know that there's a program in every phone called CUI. Mm -hmm. CUI is a third party uh, application that's been put on basically every single Android phone up to last year um, when it was a big thing that they got, you know, it got popped, if you will. Um, but that's what it was. That's what it was uh, put there to do. It, it monitors everything that you are doing. Well, and man, you're right, Corey. Everybody is doing it. Everybody's doing it. I Just mean, don't be stupid enough to say you're doing it. Well, well they said hold on, it. Hold they on. Said it we shouldn't be. We got caught. We shouldn't be stupid to not think that everybody's doing it. Am I right? No, that's what I agree with. We should. well, we we shouldn't think. You know, we there, there, there's well, a bunch, well, and as people have their their bubbles burst, you know, it's like, wow, I didn't realize. It's like, you know, in, in our community, realize. we've always what said that. You? you know, we've always said, you know, the security and privacy is an illusion. It's an illusion. Right, but there still needs to be an element of trust with your service provider. Gee. You can trust that they're going to spy on you. You can trust that they're going to spy on you. Bingo. You can trust that part of them giving you services or you paying for those services that they're selling a portion of your information to the big dogs. It's, oh, you, you, it you, is you, all about you can, profiling these days. You can, you can trust that, but the other thing that kind of got Verizon kind of you know, uh, binged, and I, I don't use that pun lightly, um, mm -hmm. is the fact that they have certain applications where in their ecosystem where they like to push. You know, I think people got mad because they load uh, like Google navigation and stuff on there, and then every mm -hmm. time they go to navigate, it would by default call up their uh, Verizon's, what is it, that VXZ or whatever it is? Yeah. Their navigator. Yeah, you got to pay for that one. You and people pay for are that like, one. We, we don't want to use that, and that's what defaults even when you make the other one and try to take it off. They force load it back on, and they're like, why should I pay for that when it's when I can get this well, one if, as an Android free that's better? Well, if you root it, if you root your system, you can get that get out of that. You can get out, yeah. Yeah, but that goes and back to that show that we had why, why you know, you got a lot of people phone. that, yeah. you know, <laughs> you, do you want everybody to root their phone? It's... Mm, why not? It's yours, right? <laughs> doesn't yeah. matter to me, but you know. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> yours, but I ain't doing it for you because when, it, when you blow it, it, I ain't having you call me asking me to fix it. Oh, well, yeah, that's that's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not doing it for you, but I mean, the information is out there freely available to anybody who wants to do it. I can uh, write you an Android app that can do it for you, but uh, don't call me to fix it. 
Well, you know, the, 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 one of the things is, is it is different for every single Android phone. No, number one, there's no standard out there of rooting these days. That's because true. the exploit is different on every phone. Mm -hmm. It's different. So, you know, it's, if there was a form of standardization, if somebody could actually write an app, that would be standard across the board of how to root this particular phone because you still have some phones that can't be rooted because they're, they're boot locked. They're locked from the bootloader. Yeah. You know? And you actually need help from the provider. In those particular situations, they have to be okay with you rooting that phone. You know? Speaking of phones, I wanted I wanted to throw this out here because I know cuz you 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 are a huge fan of this phone, uh, and they're coming out with a part two right now. Asus is coming out with the Pad Phone Two, and oh, they're yeah. saying that is my phone. Yeah, they're saying this one may come to America. I don't know what the deal is with Asus of why they're holding this technology back from us. I think they think that we're stupid. You know, I'm really starting to think or believe that some some people don't don't feel that we're very bright or that this is we can catch on to these types of things. Okay. Um, maybe it's just simply because the transformer line has not sold well here in America. Well, it's, I think it's because we're always so slow to adopt stuff. You know, it could be you know why they've held it back. I mean, but overseas it seems to be doing fine, and I mean it makes all the sense in the world. Well, check out some of these specs, though. Uh, this this is good. Okay, four point seven inch screen, HD, thirteen megapixel camera. Mm hmm. Yeah, 13 megapixel camera. Um, that would have to be. Yeah, 13. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, good. Most, cam most, cam most phones now come with 8. So, yeah, 13 is good. Yeah. Um, I have not gotten any specs on the processors and stuff like that yet, but um, of course they're saying it's going to be thinner and lighter than the other one. But since we didn't even get to see the other one, it doesn't matter to us. Um, but I can see it in video. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of made me sick looking at it in video going, I want it. Right. Um, also, any anybody here by AOL Auto? Did, did you get the memo on AOL Auto? What's that? AOL is reinventing email. Um, and it's a program they're calling Auto. No, I may have to call my boy on that. Yeah, Auto actually here. I'll see you. I'll give you this link to it. Auto looks very interesting. Um, I have tried to get in into the uh, private beta testing that they're doing right now. And they haven't gotten an invite yet. Um, but basically, they're turning email into a visual stack. And yeah, they are completely breaking the paradigm of email here. But I have to say, it looks really good. It looks really, really good. I'm like um, five minutes from the AOL uh, headquarters. So yeah, take a look. There's actually there's actually video out on it. There's actually uh, quite a bit of information. I put a link to it. But yesterday, I mean, it was out on every. It was out everywhere. Um, but if you look at it, it kind of looks like Pinterest or, <laughs> but it's email. And they're using, well, I mean, you, you, you have a bunch of them that are basically taking on that kind of, that, that Pinterest kind of whatever. Yeah. The, new, um, the G plus app on, um, the iPhone, I don't know how it looks on Android yet, but it looks so it similar to that as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I think this is, I mean, it's getting a lot of buzz right now. And, you know, it so, looks good. It looks good. It's, it's definitely different, um, a different approach to email. Um, and it's a client that will be compatible with um, Gmail, AOL, and Yahoo um, to start off with. Um, That's what Yahoo should have done. You know, well, yeah, Yahoo basically, though, I think with their... Um, you know, with uh, their GoDaddy and their hosting and that kind of stuff that, you know, we'll see what, I don't know what's going to happen with Yahoo, to be honest. They don't either. 
No, they they don't. They they don't. But you know, since we talked about Verizon, let me do this. Uh, and I mentioned this a little bit last week, but it's it's worth um, bringing up again. You you've heard the news about Sprint, right? Which one? The that uh, foreign bank. Uh, I mean, a foreign telecom is getting ready yeah. to buy them. Yeah. 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 That's that's going to be real interesting, um, considering. Um, that the government is already looking into Huawei and uh, and a couple of other the Chinese telecoms out there. Um, they have been put on basically a watch list. They don't know if these, guys, you know, how in bed they are with the Chinese government. I think this is going to become a serious problem. Um, I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't think. I think free enterprise can no longer be as free as it once was. There are certain there are certain types of companies that can't or should not be able to be purchased from for other or from other countries. Um, I think it's. I mean, the government is already saying Huawei is a national security threat. You know, because of its. Chinese yeah, I was about to touch on that. If if they do sell that, Sprint will no longer be able to get no government contracts. It, it's getting very interesting. Um, I, I don't think America, I, I don't think the forefathers could have thought this far ahead to to be at a place where we're talking about things that are critical infrastructure. You know, now, do you think that they're thinking about that? Because obviously, that's not even a thought in their minds. In whose mind? Sprint. No, it's not. They're thinking about think survival. It's, yeah, Sprint's thinking about survival, but it, it, it's it's getting weird because you know Huawei, and, and and a lot of people know them for the for the phones, and it wasn't until last year, a couple of years ago, that you probably didn't know who they were. Huawei, H-U-W-E-A-I. You've seen the phones out there, I'm sure. But probably what you didn't know is they make routers, very insecure routers, mm -hmm. might I add. <laughs> might I add. Very insecure routers, might I add. But they're making products that are put have been able to be put in critical infrastructure type places and there's some very dubious clouds over Huawei of who actually owns them. You know, it is partially owned by the Chinese government. That's a little bit of a problem. That's a big problem, bro. It's a big problem. Okay? So, I think there's going to be an issue going forward with, you know, companies, uh, especially in this situation. Sprint is the third largest telecom in the country. Still. For them to, for them to be bought out by, you know... A foreign government or a foreign company can become a problem. A lot of people don't even realize T-Mobile is not a U.S. company. A lot of people don't even realize that T-Mobile is not a U.S. company. T-Mobile is not a U.S. company. No, T-Mobile is a German company. Yes, I didn't know that. Yes, they are a German company. Well, let's do let's do two more things and then kind of you know get into. The you know probably the the topic for the night and uh, the the first thing which we also talked about earlier uh, is that color, which is an app that I actually kind of like and I'm sorry to see it go but the company's calling it quits. Oh man. Yeah. It's just not enough interest I don't think. Um, Apple seemed interested in in, in them though because they bought the engineers. So. <laughs> <laughs> they really, they wasted no time in looting. I told you, follow their personnel. They they looted color real quick. And mm -hmm. it, expect something similar. Oh yeah. You know, with Apple, follow the personnel. Or you well, I was wondering why they just didn't buy the entire company, the whole technology. Yeah. And, you know, I start from scratch. I, I, I don't. I you know I don't really get it. Well, kind of got framework, right? Yeah, they are. I mean, they have a full product. I mean, and it's a very good one. Um, obviously, at this point in time, you can get the technology very dirt cheap. 
but they chose not to go that way. Um, they chose to just get the personnel, um, which is interesting. I mean, maybe well, it's interesting. products come and go. That's personnel. true. Person, I mean, look at look at Microsoft. We've been talking about Microsoft ninety. Well, Microsoft three point one. Now we're up to Microsoft eight or Windows eight. Mm -hmm. Those products have come and those products have gone, but those those personnel are still around, building new ideas, coming up with new thoughts. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing. Oh uh, yeah, hope, hopefully it'll, it'll work that way. You know, and I said two. I mean, I was I misspoke. It's three, because we're gonna do one other. We're two. One other company. Uh, of course, it's it's Corey's favorite, and he and I had a discussion about this earlier. Um, and this is, of course, Apple with their new iPhone and the uh, the issue surrounding the the Lightning connector. It's the the Lightning connector. You know, great technology and all that. And its name is actually kind of app because you know apropos. Because there's a lot of discussion over, you know, how that potentially is going to affect Apple and their sales. Because there's some people that are basically like um, going, I don't, I love the iPhone, but with everything what? surrounding this new one. Move. Uh okay. <laughs> Philip has a strong voice. Yeah, um, you know, with everything surrounding it, with the shortages, and then with the new connector and some of the technology that's built into it, you know, with the embedded chip for you to be able to work or even charge your phone, you know, there are people are like, I don't know if I want, and I can't use my old stuff, and and kind of the juxtaposition to me uh, with that is even with the shortcoming necessarily of the Android phones. I say this being an Android user. You have some of the Android manufacturers talking about now potentially going green and shipping new phones without the charges and connectors because the ones that they have already work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see. now Apple basically going, okay, we're going to make you get something new and we're going to charge you for it and you're going to have to retrofit all of your old stuff to make it work with your new stuff. And you know what those people are going to do? They're going to buy that stuff anyway because they already bought the phone. Well, it's he, called. Here's, here's the problem. Right? Dealing. <laughs> here is the problem, and, and I'm dealing with I'm dealing with this problem on a personal level. You know, because my mother has an iPhone five. She loves the phone, but she can't get a car that. There's shortages on the product, and because of this, because of this, she had already. I mean, I, I tried to convince her prior to getting an iPhone that she should get an S three. And she actually really liked the note. She played with it. She really liked the note. Um, but now, because of the problem of the shortages, and it's not the adapter, she would have no problem going out and buying the adapter if it was out there to be bought. Mm -hmm. So you're right on that end of things that, yes, iPhone users will just, they have no problem with going out and picking up or spending this money to get the stuff. But the problem is now that they can't get it. There are no supplies. There are no iPhone five supplies in the stores now. It's because Can they not get it off of off of like no. Amazon or some no. off no. the market. No, the problem is coming from Apple. With it's there's a shortage. There is a shortage. Um, who knows why? Who knows what the problem is? Yada yada yada. But they're not out there. They're just not out there. They just shipped the adapter. What last week? Wow. Last week, right. So, and there's still shortages on, on those. So people are starting to, well, I haven't even heard people starting to get them yet. So, you know, it's, it's an issue. Now, I know what Lionel is going with this because we had this conversation earlier. You know, and I'm, and I'm trying to tell him, yeah, it, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You know, it's going to affect certain users, yes. But if you are thinking that somehow, some way, this is going to be the you know the underlying downfall of Apple, I don't think it's going to be a downfall. I think it's going to be a ding in their reputation, just like the 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 stuff with the iOS six was a ding. I think I think Apple with the with the new iPhone, it's a great product and is better than their old one. However, Apple necessarily some of its 
the luster of it being, you know, you get an Apple and it just works and everything's fine. You have it, whatever you need, you get it. You know, that reputation that they had has been somewhat tarnished. Lionel, with this that, release. that was a myth. That was a myth in the first place. You know, you guys are, you guys are primarily, the mainstream is primarily new to Apple. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we are not new to Apple and we've always, there's always been issues with Apple. I've gone through five right. or four iMacs. You know, mm -hmm. I've had problems with, you know, other things with Apple before. It doesn't change the fact that if something happens to this iMac, I'm buying another iMac or I'm mm -hmm. buying another Mac. It, it doesn't yep. change. I mean, could be, it's like the, the presidential race. You only got two two people you can really buy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah, going back to Windows. Yeah, I'm not going back. Uh, you, you say you get two. As far as I'm concerned, you got ver two versions of the same, but we won't go into that. There you go. Bingo. Unless you want to go Solaris, but who, who who plays video games on Solaris? What the heck is Solaris? Well, you know. Yeah. We we don't we don't even know what but, we, you know, is becoming at this point in time. They don't even know what they are at this point in time. You know. Uh, but uh, my, Microsoft, I think, is on, on the on the verge of being, you know, just about, you know, Microsoft ultimately is going to go away. And the irony of this necessarily, even with the various versions of Android and that kind of stuff, I think the, the companies are actually going to be Apple and Google, um, you know, ironically. It already is. I mean, it really pretty much already is uh, for all of the relevant markets at this point in time. And we have to say right now that the desktop is becoming increasingly less relevant. Mm -hmm. um, so because of that, Microsoft really doesn't have a relevant market to hold on to at this point. And I think you'll see after the, the – and the, the, here's going to be the, the big thing. This year, Christmas sales, Windows 8 units will tell the story. That's going to tell the story right there. Well, they're, 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 they're pushing them, and I've seen their Bing commercials, and they're trying to, ooh, you know, the, this blind test about Bing versus Google and, you know, and all the... the I think they're lying. They're doing some clever marketing. I, I'm taking the test, and it's they're, like, they're no matter what you clever do, marketing. it's Bing. <laughs> I, think they're, I think it's rigged. I think the test is rigged, rigged, rigged. Oh, you, rigged. but see, you know it is. You, you you basically know it is because each search engine necessarily has its strength, and I'm not necessarily putting down Bing, but you pretty much aren't going to tell me that Bing is as comprehensive as Google. It can't be here's at this point. But you know what? Here's the problem. Here's the Bing case. sucks. Here's the case in point of Microsoft still not getting it. I could care less about the search engine nowadays. They all have pretty much similar, you know, similar answers. It's the ecosystem. I'm not losing. I'm not leaving. It's not because of the search engine that I'm not leaving Google. It's the email. It's I have an Android tablet. I have an Android phone. I have all of these things. I can't. That, that, I'm, that's I'm what they're it. trying to. That, that's what I'm they're trying it. to do. You know, and and it killed me when you know I read that article about yeah Microsoft is trying to you know mix apps with their operating system and bring them all together. And I'm like. Really? Thief. Just now? Thief. You're figuring Nothing that out? Nothing but a out? thief. <laughs> you're figuring that? You're kind of late. Well, oh, no, no, no. They're thieves that got there late. It's already been stolen. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. They're, you're they're not... the thieves that get caught. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. want to get caught. Like, oh, you man. There. Come up with your hands up. Yeah, you, you <laughs> broke into the empty warehouse. Yeah. That's exactly. who Microsoft is. They, they're the guys that broke into the empty warehouse. Thinking all the goods were there, but it, you know it's gone. They're already gone. You know? Yeah. It's, but see, Microsoft is famous for stealing, so they will steal the scrap again. Yeah, they'll steal again. again. They will steal again. They will live to steal again. I, I will give you that. If you look in the dictionary, Microsoft it says thief. <laughs> That's all it is. But That's you know all what? It is. Part of the problem with Microsoft, though, is they don't know what to steal anymore. The, you know, Bill that Gates is, was the visionary. It. He was the visionary. He knew what to steal. Who was that? Bill Gates. Oh, Bill, yeah. Bill knew what to steal. Bill knew what to sell. Too. Bill sold an operating system before he even had it. 
<laughs> you know, he didn't even have. Well, but see, that, that, but see, that that was a thing about if you look at both Steve Jobs and you look at you know Bill Gates and you look at both of the early you know the early times of the company, both of them did it. They were both pirates. Steve Jobs saw he sold a computer before it even existed. Exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> Steve Steve has the famous quote. You know, good artists. When you say good artists borrow, great artists steal, you know, which is a takeover class quote, well, you know. But you know, he knew what to, he knew what to take. He, they knew. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they, the, the first Max basically he he sold them and they didn't exist yet, and he used the money from the idea to build them. But they weren't real yet; they were ideas. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they had prototypes. prototypes. Yeah, basically prototypes. You know, but that, that that's Microsoft's problem, and that's gonna be their problem until they get they they're gonna you have to go find something that may not even exist. Number one, I don't think a Bill Gates and a Steve Jobs comes around very often, or Larry Ellison. I don't think these guys, or Sergey Brand from Google, or you know Larry from Google, these guys are not built every day. So I don't know where you get these guys from, or where you're gonna think you're gonna find these guys from. But that's your problem right there. Until you can find some guys like that, I don't. I don't think that they're built. I think they're born. Uh, you might I think right. they're born, and 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 the system, and, and there's just something in them that the system doesn't beat it out of them because the system tries to beat it out of you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, as you go through. Absolutely. Um, but then, kind of like moving moving on to the the kind of I guess the unless you have something after this oh, kind of the last piece for I, I, I got one last one just for any of the people that are watching out there um, the 32 gig Nexus 7 has been spotted in the wild at staple stores and guess what it is the exact same price as the 16 gig 249 wow wow so. Cool. I'm a little hostile about this because we just picked up a Nexus Seven, you know, this, the, this, you know, the 16 gig version, for 249. So now I'm like, okay, uh, Google, you, you know, what are we gonna do about this? But um, here's the deal: I don't think this is supposed to be actually on the shelf yet. Um, it was not supposed to be out to October the 29th, and it appears that. Staples in certain places have jumped the gun Oops. and started selling them. So if you can get your hands on this, bless you. Thank you. You're out there watching and you know, if anybody can get their hands on one of these, y'all should let us know if this is, you know, something that's real out there. Um, but it did hit the web. Somebody actually posted a receipt showing that they had purchased one. Um, so I'll put a link to that also. So, but if anybody can get their hands on this, um, and I don't know, we talked about, we had our tablet show, you know, about a week or two ago or whatever. Um, the Nexus 7 is a great, great tablet. If you're in the market for a tablet, um, it's a great tablet. But also around Christmas time, there are rumors of a 10-inch Nexus 7 coming out. So, you might want to wait. So, And so you, you mentioned that, um, and that's kind of the kind of, touches on something else that just reminded me of is, you know, Amazon is yeah. actually pushing the Kindle for classrooms right now. Yeah. I think that could be interesting. That could be interesting. Um, they have a much lower price point than the iPads. Well, here, here's a, you know, I, I know we said we was going to move on, but this is kind of something that we should talk about. Amazon actually wrote a note or kind of a, uh, uh, to the consumer, if you will, posted a the CEO makes some comments. Uh, basically, they're selling all of their Kindles at cost. They don't make a dime on the hardware. So they're saying they put all of their money into the concept of these were going to be media consumption devices, and people are not buying the media. You know, it's not happening like they thought it was. So they're losing money on the Kindle line. So he had one, you know, very strong line is like, you know, he said, basically, I need you guys to buy some stuff. So <laughs> if you Kindle owners out there and you, you, you like your Kindles, you want to keep having your Kindles, uh, you better buy some. 
because yeah, but the, you know, I I think a lot of people are missing the mark. Why are you know we still buying textbooks if if they want? To you know, sell those Kindles. Start getting these distributors to distribute the textbooks or whatever to the Kindle. I just had what, like earlier this year, twenty six more books sent to me. Books, really? I just I don't want to shut. I I'm books. I have, hold on, hold on now, hold on. Here's the thing with books. 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 Is like the will, my friends. You can get a. You need books. Sorry. You don't need <laughs> when, when <laughs> books. Okay. Well, okay. Sounds like that sounds like a circular argument, Philip. Books. Uh, uh, books. I'm sorry. Right? You don't. You don't need books. You do. Uh, no. You do. Well, okay. Because Why? what what were, what were we talking about today? Just before. What did we do before there were books? I haven't even seen this show yet. The walls. Do, do we still we need? We had to tablets books? before we had we, books. Exactly. We had tablets. We wrote on the walls. Books have not always been around. And we survive without books. And we will survive without books. But information but changes. Information does so rapidly change. rapidly for you to continue exactly. printing this stuff. You know this, Shanice. Change. By the time you put something in a book, it's, it's already outdated. Way. That's true too. It's already outdated. I teach Java. Why even put that in a book? It's your stuff. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Other than the fundamentals, why would you no, put no, I mean, robotics in a book? For well, I mean, it, see the, the the whole thing with the with the Kindle. It it I brought okay, that up I'm, when you were I, talking I about the tab because it actually kind of <laughs> makes sense. It, it makes sense, especially like if you look at your know, classroom and student environments and, and that, and then especially if you start looking at you know at college, you know it gives people the option of okay, as opposed to buying a book, now you can maybe rent for a, your a quarter or a year or whatever an electronic version, or you can buy it if you want to keep it and upload it in the cloud. But you know, okay, go to the bookstore, boom, boom, boom. I want this, download it. Here's my here are all my textbooks right there. Yeah, but the problem is with Amazon. I mean, it opens the models. They're late to the party. They're late to the party this time. The iPad is already there. Mm -hmm. The iPad is all. How long has iTunes University been around? I'm sure you're familiar, Shanice, with mm -hmm. iTunes University. Yeah. It, it's been around forever. Yes, and I use it. And you use it, I'm sure. As a, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. But do you know how many people don't even know about it? Oh, please. My students mm -hmm. are taking classes at Stanford. Thank you. <laughs> Not you, you, can get, you can get, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. a professor from MIT mm -hmm. can yeah. teach you something. You know what I mean? You can, I, you can I, attend that. Yeah, I have several blog posts about how you can get an Ivy League education without going to an Ivy League school. For well, you I can. University is one of those ways. You mm -hmm. can get that education, but you can't get that signature you from can. the president. But if, you, if you go to the college, if you're going to college already to get what we call a, 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 an education, mm -hmm. if you will, um, why not use iTunes U as a companion? Why not, if you have a chance to get a, a, a Harvard, if you yeah. can sit in on a Harvard uh, lecture. Well, I guess lecture, but you see, if you're in Minnesota, you're right. not allowed to do that these days. You know, why not? <laughs> well, but see, but see to, to your point, though, Philip, you say that that's only partially true. If you look at one of the um, companies that's out now, Coursera, that has some from Harvard, you know, yeah. I think Stanford, MIT, well, when you complete the course, you get a certificate of completion from the school. Yeah. Granted, it's not, you know, yeah, you get a certificate of completion for the course saying you completed the course. Right. So while it's not accredited, you actually have proof that you know you got this education from this prestigious university and you completed the curriculum. Right. And Which, there are people that have actually gotten jobs having using that to complete some of their basics to prove that they knew them. In technology, in certain forms of technology like programming like this, like that, we don't require that you got to, you know, you don't need to go to MIT. I mean, honestly, if, if you're a good hacker, <laughs> you know, and we can somehow certify you as being that, 
you know, you went to a decent school or whatever. And number one, to be honest with you, I never trusted, you know, too many programs that went to school. You know, because I've all I've said this for years. I said, you yeah. know what? If you're learning out of a book, mm -mm. it ain't in your blood. It ain't coursing through you mm -mm. Like, it, like it needs to be. You know, I, I trust those guys. I know them when I see them. They're scraggly. They look like they hack stuff. Mm -hmm. You can trust those guys that you cannot trust. Exactly. Right. You know, they ate, pre they ate pizza for breakfast and they live yeah. on Starbucks. And you know, the 13 year olds that come into high school, you know, or 12 year olds for that mm -hmm. matter, they already know how to do all. All of this stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, they're, they're basically like Curry's kids that can't talk but can call on the phone. Mm -hmm. well, Which I, is I, funny. I've been telling you, my son is a hacker. I, I mean, he's a hacker. I've never seen a dude that's as skilled as he is at two years old at breaking into things and messing it up. Mm -hmm. You know, phone, lock codes, it doesn't matter. He'll get in and he'll mess it up. He's good. He's he's gifted in that way. So we don't know what he's going to be, but, you know, if I don't watch it, he might be in jail. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he's he's gifted. But let's go ahead and start the show because, you know, we got we got a lot to talk about on that end of things. And maybe we can help Philip. Well, yeah, because we, I think we, Philip was saying earlier yeah, he want to be have a, a Really a lot to yeah, talk about blow. with, you know, with that. Go ahead, Philip. Yeah, I do want to blog. I want to blog about golf. There's only a few things well, I we, like. We know we 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 know if you blog, it's going to be about golf. You know, I mean that that's pretty much all you know is golf. That's all I know is golf and the Bible. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, I mean, everybody knows computers. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, no, every, everybody think... does not know computers, but you know, kind of you know, starting off. Um, and we could get, you know, and Corey and I talked about this, and we could get you know, technical, and, you know, and there's some things that we could break down. But I actually thought about, you know, for, for having a website, Corey, I think we should kind of maybe start with just even the basics not getting too technical, which is why I put that thing on there of Domain Names 101. Yeah, we is should, most we people, when you're having a site, Mm -hmm. Don't understand how important just the name is, you know, before oh, yeah. you even get to, you know, where it's like a dot com or a dot net or a, a first level, but you know, just the name, you know, it's like, do you want like a a hundred character unpronounceable name? You know, it's like my company that's in the Bahamas that rents beach houses, no, you know, yeah, you know, that could be somebody's real domain that somebody tries to rent, but who would try to type all of that? That's yeah, true. It's, it's it's not about how long it is. It's how easy it is to remember. How short it is. It's, you know, scientifically, it's been proven that the shorter your name is, the, the more apt you are to get traffic to it. The problem is, is, you know, when people go to register names, here's where the, the 30 years of Internet catch up to them at one time. Their name is not there. The name that they went to get that they thought for sure was going to be there is not there. And you know why? Because people have been registering domain names for a very long time now, and they squat on them, and they sit on them, and your name is probably, that you want is probably on someone's shelf waiting for you, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, to go, hey, I want this name. Um, so, I mean, that's why a lot of people end up with these very long, strange names, because when they actually go through the process, you know, we all think our name is there. You know, and then you go and try to register the domain, and you find out that no, that that name's been long gone. So you then you end up settling they most of the time. Over for, already? I guess. Yeah, they, man, hockey goes fast. Yeah, you know, wham bam, thank you, man. What's up, Lee? That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> What's I, up, left Lee? I left the money on the dresser and said bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but. But you uh, are right. Yeah, go, go the, back to the domain yeah, is, the name very, is important. very important. It is very, very important. It's just not kind of glaze over it. Um, it is kind of the first thing that you do um, when you decide to get a website. That's the first thing you should do is you should go out, number one, and figure out what you're going to be talking about, and then figure out, number two, what domain falls in line with that, as close as you can get, as close as you can get. 
Because I can guarantee you, your first choice, eh, think again. It ain't going to be. Have to add a number one to it. Yeah, you you got to get creative with it if you you know you want that one. Um, but yeah, that's you know, I, you know, I told I told um, I told Lionel this. I said, you know, this is going to be an interesting show because hosting and blogging and all of these different things. Okay, there's an easy way to get into the game, and then there's the way that we do it. <laughs> you know, there's a whole training or a whole kind of thing that goes into learning how to host a site, learning how to do this, how to set a website up, how to do all these types of things. And most of us didn't go to school for it. We learn at other people's expense a oh, lot of times. Yeah. We, we learned at a lot of people's expense. You know, I learned how to build a web, website by first destroying websites. That's just what it is. On the job training. On the job training. In the heat, in the fire. Yeah. Go make some changes to that thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean we yeah. you know and yeah, you because know, we we talk about, you know, the, the, the you know the code, you know, everybody's you know, HTML and you and you and I went back and forth about actually explaining stuff and not being able to uh, basically break it down, you know, too much, uh, you know, so that people can understand it. But, you know, and, and I, I ride the fence in that because we use a lot of acronyms. So while I don't necessarily think that we should explain, you know, in detail what all the acronyms mean. Well, who doesn't I'm know? Kind of as we go, as Raise we go through this, what the non-technical people don't. Well, he, he, the non-technical people don't know what HTML right. is, but trying to actually explain it past what the acronym means, that's a whole other thing. So my <laughs> thing is, here's what the acronym means, but trying to explain to you, you that, you know, like it. HTML, hypertext markup language, but then where I try to tell you that's the code that basically makes it look graphically so that you can appreciate it on the screen, and here are all these other millions of commands behind it, you know, to make it do that, oh well. Yeah. Okay, hang on, hang yeah, on, hang on. Is it just me, or does Lionel have the Battlestar Galactica thing going on again? Mm-hmm. All right, just making sure it wasn't just me. I didn't hear it, actually. Okay. He's a little fuzzier tonight. I know, I do I do see that. I see your connection is well, not I'm as strong. Well, I'm a little bit fuzzier because I'm, I'm, I'm back, and, and the Battlestar Galactica somewhat could actually be my voice, but then you know, Lee, oh, for the past connection. week or two, you've had... Um, some connection issues too, which have, is ironic. I, I think connection it's issues a South daily. Carolina thing. Yeah, I think well, it, I'm know. starting to think it's a South Carolina thing. Well, you know, I am on <coughs> charter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not, we're not getting started on that. But you know, um, but then the, the uh, you know we talk about the name, but then the other thing I think that we we did talk about earlier that's you know worth mentioning. Um, you know, that is technical, but it's not as, you know, we, you and I talked about uh, how they talk about bandwidth as far as websites and that it's actually a misnomer of what it is, you know, because we yes. talk about website bandwidth and it's not really bandwidth we're talking about. Yeah, it's more like usage, you know, it's more like yeah. your cell phone bill, you know, you're getting dinged for usage, you know, charges. A certain, allowable usage. Yeah, allowable usage, and you know. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, if you if you get with if you find a good host, you won't have to worry about that too much because it's, there's too many out there that have unlimited, you know. And yeah, there are some terms of you know you can't violate the terms of service like you know using it as a a sharing portal, if you will, and things of that sort. But only if you get caught. Only if you get caught, you know, you can, you know, and, you know, it can technically be done. It's just you know. It is a violation of their TOS, and uh, if they find you, they will ban you and kick you off most of the time. So, but if usage, there's still some, I know there's still some, some of the premium hosts out there, like Rackspace, and these guys, they're the ones that will ding you hard for usage. <laughs> you know, they don't have the unlimited package, you know. Um, every, you pay for everything. When you go to a premium host like Rackspace, and I have my They're own, like Verizon. I have my own problems with Rackspace. You know, I do. I mean, premium. I you know, I, I don't call them premium necessarily. 
You know, I know their infrastructure is golden, but you know, there's something to be said about usability, and these dudes don't get it. They they really don't get it. You know, so I, you know, honestly, I don't think anyone. If you if number one, if you're just talking about being a blogger and having a standard website, you you know. Rack space, no, don't go there. Okay, <laughs> go to GoDaddy. Don't go there. Go oh, Daddy. don't get me started on GoDaddy. <laughs> you know, I, know. But, but, I mean, there's if we get into hosting, there's I mean, you know, we all can. There's horror stories. Okay, well, you know what? We're talking about hostings. Let's let's jump into it. Well, here you go. <laughs> so what? Okay, what when you you keep using the term premium, premium host company, premium this, premium that? What features? Make a hosting company premium, unlimited. Okay. Well, Rackspace is not unlimited. Um, I, I I say it to you like this: the only thing that makes Rackspace quote unquote a premium host is the price. You're paying a premium to be with Rackspace. What's what's their oh, price um, in ballpark? What's their price run? Um, they start off at about. It depends on you know if you of course it's it's tiered. Um, number one, they don't even have shared hosting scenario like most most people do. So the little nine ninety five hosting, no, you don't have that with Rackspace. That's not even an offer. Um, so they so don't use virtual machines then. <laughs> it, they do use virtual, but they don't have a shared tier. Okay. Okay. So um, they started. Let me see. It's been a minute, so let's just go to the website and we'll take a look at what Rackspace is starting at. I mean, you you look at Rackspace, but you know one that's actually considered a premium, and they're necessarily considered a premium because of who they are as network solutions. Oh, yeah. I, I I would never consider them a premium host, but okay, they've been around for. Yeah, but there are people that do. <laughs> well, that's because they were the first in this country. Yeah, they've been around forever. I give them that. Yeah, they 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 were the first before all the other registers came online. There was network solutions. And then the other ones came. Yeah, I mean, I remember. Why are you looking this up? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I remember when I first started in the game. You, if you wanted to register a domain, you went to Network Solutions. You went that to was Network it. Solution. That that was pretty much the one that you started with. Um, let's see. Yeah, oh. and and that's well, because he, they, at one point they were the only one. Well, see, here's how you know someone is a premium host. They don't even put prices on the website. Yeah, I don't see their prices. There's no prices <laughs> on the website. So, so basically, they are the website. Have to ask. Drive. What, what's that? What's that saying? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. You have to ask, you can't afford it. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> so they should, they should, they should have that company at Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. Well, mm -hmm. the last company I was with, we had we had rack space, and we paid upwards of three hundred dollars a month. Um, for how much space? Uh, it wasn't that much. Wow. It really wasn't that much. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sorry. Did you say three hundred dollars a month? Zero zero three zero zero. Did month. they buy you dinner first or just bend no. you over? Hey, you know what? It wasn't my choice. Okay. They threw it, they threw them out of the car when they were finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a foot out the door. Right? <laughs> Your money's on the dresser. Get out. <laughs> um. I, I spoke to the CEO of the company many days and was like, dude, not, not only are we getting smacked up, you know, and our hair pulled, uh, it's not even good, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not even good. You know, it was terrible. Um, but they were under contract. They were under contract with Rackspace. They couldn't get from under it. Um, you know, I had my own side hosting, so if I didn't, if it wasn't "Quote unquote," something that needed to be "quote unquote" company related, if you will. I'd I'd take them off the grid and use my outside services before I put it on Rackspace. But yeah, it was it was around three hundred dollars a month. Good they Lord. had great customer service though. I will give you that. They had well, three hundred dollars a month. They better. Wait, well, here's the crazy thing, right? With Rackspace, um, like I said, usability was terrible. So one of the big things with Rackspace is we know our system is a little complicated, so, you know, call us day or night, we'll help you. So, you know, as a techie, you hate that. 
You hate being on the phone with customer support. You hate calling another technical agent to help you do something. So this became a real problem for me. But I had to break down a few times and actually call them. And the guy was like, you know what, man? I'm sorry. Yes, our system sucks. Let me do that for you. What? Yes. Why? That doesn't make sense to me. In a way, it does. <laughs> but it doesn't I make sense. Question marks over your head, dude. <laughs> it, like, what? That the employee of a company would say that his own product sucks? No, that they would make their product <laughs> hard to use. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something. I don't want to offend. Uh, I don't want to offend anybody here, Lee. Um, I'm kind of thinking. I think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. It, they're a Linux company. They yeah, are, and, I've, and I've had a couple of these, so don't yeah. worry about offending me. Yeah, they, they are a Linux company, um, which most companies, most hosting companies are Linux companies. Yeah, I but don't they know. hide they hide the Linux. You know what I mean? They The front end hides the Linux. They well, did. they have to, though, because they did. They did. Oh. No, they, they didn't? Yeah, you will virtually pipe right in to a Linux console. Bam. Most you Americans. Know, most of the hosting companies were at the, um, you know, years ago anyway. It that is, is that, like that a is, 10 Yeah, because Linux is thing that we have Linux is more with. stable, yeah. and they have to have some kind of Windows. The, the, yeah. yeah. I started with Pair, but like and likewise years or something. Yeah, I've been with the same company for about fifteen, however long I've had Meet Greeks. That company, I still, I'm still with that company. I've not had a problem with them, and it's you know Unix based. Mm -hmm. It's you know what, I, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to say this, and I'm just, you know, and then we can kind of hire everyone, move it on or whatever. But the problem I have with Rackspace is like the interface to the hosting setup. It was very convoluted. Um, you can have too many options, especially when you're trying to set something up. It helps sometimes if you don't have everything right there in your face. Mm -hmm. Like every mm -hmm. option under the moon is like right there staring at you in no directions. You know what I mean? Um, their help um, it wasn't very helpful. Um, you know, it just it, it just wasn't. And I'm, you know, to me personally, I've been used to using you know um, hosting that had a much cleaner interfa interface. That you know, I didn't need all this customization. Number one, I didn't need it for most of the projects I was working on anyway. Bingo. That's that's part of the problem. You you, you just don't need all of that. You know, I could have got away with a GoDaddy you know, for most of these, or you know, uh, you know. I mean, you, you just didn't need all that. So, and you were paying for all of that stuff that end up being more of a headache than helping you in, in any particular way. So, that was my problem with Rackspace. I, it wasn't a very pleasurable experience, but I will say this for them: they have excellent customer service. And if you ask them to, if you're really having a problem setting some up, they'll go ahead and set it up for you. I mean, they'll just go. Hey, you know what? That, uh, we'll do that for you. You know. Well, and you know, well, you, know, you, you talk about them, and and it's kind of a, a, a segue a little bit into this question. I actually posted the answer so that you all could look, and, and I'll ask it like this: in terms of the the hosting companies, both domestic and global, there is actually one that is the largest by far in the world. Which one is it? And there's only one. Everybody else is not even a close second. I would probably say GoDaddy. I, I would probably say GoDaddy. Um, but then again, nope, it's not GoDaddy. Uh, GoDaddy's probably the most advertised. I don't think it's the biggest. Right. Oh, the biggest right. is uh, yeah, they're Amazon. The most advertised oh, the you biggest. know what? The biggest nope. probably would nope. be Amazon. I was saying, nope. I'm going right, to nope. take a shot in the dark here, and, and the reason I'm going to make this answer is because I've got two of them. I'm going to say Google. Nope. Verizon. Nope. 
All right, we we the may have to in both the. Are you talking about a web the hosting? Web hosting the world. company. To find hosting here in a minute and figure, <laughs> we have to put a definition of hosting here. But give us the answer. Obviously, we're well, not. Basically, that basically lets you host, that lets you host and resell websites. They host and resell website. Resell websites. Yeah. Are you talking about pair? Yeah, you basically you could re you, you can basically do where you can resell them and you can host them. It's you know, they're a full service shop and they're the biggest in the world. And they're not who everybody thinks. And it shocked me when I actually saw who they are. Then let's just get to it, man. <laughs> who is it? <laughs> host Gator. All right, actually the biggest in the world is Wild West. Never heard of. Never heard yeah, of. Yeah, they have twenty five percent market share global. Okay, they are they, they, are they, they must they care about to all the other people then? Yeah, are they a parent? Who are who are some of this who do they own? But who do they give to? They must be <laughs> selling to go that in. Right. Please, please post your uh, source <laughs> link in chat so we can take a look at this. Yeah, you, you need to be investigated at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we will fact check. <laughs> no, no, I, I can actually do it. I actually posted it, but you know, in the in the links leading up to this. But I'll take it and I'll post it in chat, and you can yeah, look it up. Need, we need to fact check you on that one. Oh, I don't. I'm not doubting him. I just want to see. I it. ain't doubting it either. I want to know who they own because I've never heard. Of, I've never heard of these guys. Wild West, and they could be a parent company <laughs> who has a bunch of subsidiaries and a bunch yeah. of that we do know. But they you know. they own GoDaddy and they own yeah, all the look, look, look in chat. No, well, you, Yahoo owns GoDaddy. No, Rim owns GoDaddy. Rim owns. I thought GoDaddy. I thought Yahoo did. No, Rim owns GoDaddy. Rim does. Yes. Okay. See, Yahoo's actually um, number nine. Yahoo. Goo. And um, and and Corey, number six is somebody that you're familiar with. All right, is anybody Blue else getting the page cannot be displayed on those links? Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting it too. I got the same thing. Okay. See, Lyle just don't want us to see us what it is. He's making all this up. Mm -hmm. uh, um, can you go back go back into the events. Um, I know, you can look at a cash copy of it. Live fact checking on this <laughs> No, um, right. just look at the cash copy. All right, so while uh, while we're investigating facts and whatnot, let me let me let me throw something out here. Has anybody thought about done uh, used to or have a Google site? Done Google in the site? Past. Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember those in the past for internal stuff, never for real stuff. Only for internal, like. You know, like an intranet type situation. So much like a, like Google Drive. Well, you can Google has as part of their apps or their their all their application, you can actually build a website on Google using their platform. Um, they have templates and yada yada this 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 and this, but I mean it's 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 not for commercial use. So. No. No. Not at all for commercial use, but if you want to, if you want, if you need to build sort of like an internet system like that on Google Apps, um, it is pretty decent for that type of stuff. Um, it's quick, it's fast, it'll get you up and going. You know, it's not easy to build an internet system, um, and this right. is one of the quickest ones. Right, I think I just posted web hosting info dot info. Yeah. Yeah, that's coming up. Well, I've got I got two I've got two sites that I have started through Google. Mm -hmm. And the, you know the the re, you know and and the Ubuntu SC site's one of them. I mean, it's just something to throw together to put some information out there to give those who are interested, you know, a place to collect some information and get some contact information. To right. me, that's the point of having a website. Right. You know, I had it up and running in, in maybe 10 minutes. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had it up and running in 10 minutes. 
the downside to using Google Sites is they host, they register their domain names through the site oh, we all don't like, GoDaddy. Now, here's the kicker, okay? Mm -hmm. The Google site, the actual address is like sites.google.com slash your name slash hosting oh, slash, you know, it's like this long. Yes. Yeah, like well, your wiki yeah. they have a They have a feature called, um, I think it's called masking, where if you register a domain name, it takes you to the Google site, but your domain name stays in the browser. So the right. people visiting your site don't know you're going to a Google site. That's correct. Here's the downside to that. Google doesn't like masking. Oh, Google loves it. Google well, don't have a problem with it. But yeah, Amazon, you, uh, Amazon, yeah. I'm sorry, you got to go to GoDaddy's. You got to go into the zone. You got to go in the zone and GoDaddy. And, you got to yeah, take yeah. out all of the A records pointing to Google so that the A record is only pointing to GoDaddy so GoDaddy can mask the address. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, you get page cannot be displayed. And I fought this for six weeks. Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, it, it may it must be a Google thing because generally masking a site is like one it's like a click it's like one checkbox on on GoDaddy. It is. Yeah, it's one checkbox. It takes like thirty six hours to propagate changes and stuff. It takes like three seconds now. It's one checkbox on on GoDaddy to say uh uh advert or broadcast with with masking or something like that. Uh huh. The problem is when you do that. It doesn't you, have work. The, you have the A record to GoDaddy, and you have four wow. A records to Google. Wow. And if you want to keep using the masking, you have to go into the zone, and you have to remove the four so Google records. What for? So you have the A record, and then what else? What else? What are the other ones for? There's there's an A record that, po that points to uh, GoDaddy's uh, name server, mm -hmm. and then there's four, there's four records that point to Google's name servers. Okay, so the ASPX one. So you have to keep, Google, you have whatever. to get rid of the Google and just keep the GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing, mm. I had to find this in a post in a message board support post that's two yeah. years old. Ooh. <laughs> the people at huh. at GoDaddy, mm -hmm. they had they oh wait I don't know the we it's working on you know hit my favorite answer it's working on our side. I hate well, that. The thing is is and the thing is. Most people don't attempt to do what you're doing with the Google site. They just don't attempt it. Um, either they're going to leave that incredibly long, ridiculous domain name uh, that Google gives you, which is it is really long and ridiculous. Um, it would have been real. It probably went much quicker for you to just do a WordPress site than to to, to fight with Google for something like this. Well, here's why I went with Google. $10 a year takes care of the domain name registration, the web space hosting, and unlimited emails. Mm. $10 a year. $10 Money a year. Oh, that runs a marathon. Mm -hmm. $10 a year. 80 cents a month. Can't beat that. You, you they are a premium mm -hmm. web hosting company. There you go. There you go. Yes. They are premium. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah. You can ask how much that is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, and again, that depends on, you, number one, remember, you get what you pay for. It depends on what you're trying to do. You know, if, if you know for a fact your site's going to, Continue to be kind of a well. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, information hold on, sign, whatever. Hold on, Corey. Hold on, mm -hmm. hold on. We talking about Coursera, Open University, iTunes University. Mm -hmm. You don't get what you pay for. You know, we're talking about these schools are free, mm -hmm. and you can get well, yourself the schools, a are, the schools. The schools are free. Yeah. See, here's. But something from that saying, you get I, you know, for, nothing is actually free. Well, let's see here. Do you can? And I'm yeah. going to ask you this, Lee. I'm familiar with a little bit with the sites, okay? But <clears throat> do you have to use their templates, or will they actually let you use your own hosting and code? And can I do use say a, a WordPress template or something like that, or do I have to use their templates? No, none of that happens. None of that happens. You have to use. I'm um, yeah, pretty you sure you've got to use their template, but it's really customizable. I mean, it's it's there, there's being customizable, 
and then there's and then there's being ridiculous. And I think it borderline. It, it really, honestly, it borderlines on ridiculous. But it's great because you can make it fit. You can take a template that looks like a square, and when you're done, it looks like an octagon or a circle. They got blogging sites too. Yes. All mm. right, I'm gonna set me up a golf blog, man. Mm -hmm. Don't don't. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Number one, if you're gonna set up a blogging site, go through WordPress. WordPress yeah, has WordPress. free. Has free yeah, sites. WordPress is free. I mean, it's like it's, it's like name.wordpress.org or something like that. Exactly. That, yeah. It's, it's the easiest, and I think that's so what we, org we, is the one you have to pay for. Dot com or dot com or something yeah. like that. And I mean, you know, I, that was you know when we were looking at putting the the SC Ubuntu group back together, that was that was an, you know we thought we why, talked about that. Why? What? Here's a question for you. Here's a, just Lee. You, you're going to help us with this discussion tonight. Why not WordPress? Why not Blogger? Why not those those two options? They're free. Person, personal uh, preference. Personal preference. Well, I wanted a I wanted a Blogger's domain name. Blogger's owned by Google. I wanted a domain name. You can have a domain name. You can have a domain name. You can have a domain name, man. I'm no, both I, of them. I didn't want. I didn't want. Oh. I didn't want Bubba's website dot WordPress dot com. Oh, I wanted oh. a. Both Blogger and both WordPress will allow you to have your own domain name yeah. a lot easier than what you had to go through. Well, you know, <laughs> because, because I was already familiar with Google Sites. Okay. Yeah. Blogger is owned by Google, by the way. For people that don't know that, Blogger is owned by Google. So Blogger has way more, way better tools, way better everything. Um, it is not up to speed with WordPress, but at the same time, it's free, which is mm. premium, Philip. <laughs> I feel you, brother. <laughs> I'm looking to the, you know, everybody's been telling me about this WordPress, but I don't do websites. I haven't done websites in about. WordPress nine. is one of the easiest yeah. formats you can use. It's like just. Well, it, it, it's a content manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I used to do Dreamweaver years ago. So. Oh, I remember Dreamweaver. Yeah, I remember yeah. Dreamweaver. Listen to that. <laughs> we, we remember Dreamweaver. Rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace, <laughs> too. Exactly. Dreamweaver. Yeah, that's the one that Microsoft had um, page, page something. Not page. Front man. page. Front page. They had front page. Front and it wrote, page. Dirty, it wrote dirty code. I built sites using front page. And then yeah. after I built them, I'd have to go and clean up the code. Dirty that's code. The F word. I remember dude. building sites. Dirty code. That's trash. <laughs> trash. Yeah. yeah, front page would give you tons of dirty code. Mm -hmm. But you had a website. It somehow worked, and they would render in Internet Explorer. Now, outside of Internet Explorer, good mm. luck. Bingo. Good luck. So WordPress is it, huh? I'm going to go take a look at it. And it's free. Oh, that, that's it's free. speaking WordPress of which, did you see that joke that was up about, you know, Basically, it was talking about HTML5, and the, the joke basically goes, if you want to know if something's in HTML5, open Internet Explorer, and you go, okay, yeah. does it render? No, then it's HTML5. Yes, sir. <laughs> you, you think that's a joke? That's actually very true. I mean, here's the deal, and, and let, me, let me say this for all you would be designers, developers, and whatever out there, uh, if you're going to put together a website, don't forget to go check your website in Internet Explorer. Yeah. Because you will be shocked at how Internet Explorer can butcher your brand new pretty website. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be looking kind of Picasso-ish. What is a CSS? <laughs> In the world. Oh, what, cascading styles, oh, all that stuff. Oh, what? Oh, actually, when they actually have to like figure out what the codes are when they have to edit the raw ones, that's gonna be mm -hmm. the fun when they try to do it first on themselves. What is all of this stuff? It's mm -hmm. you know, because what, how a site actually renders and the code behind it are two different things. Yeah. Well, you know, we used to two, three years ago, and so most of us just said, "Screw it, we're not doing it anymore." You build your website. And then you would have to put in um, a different style sheet for IE. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. You, would have, you would have multiple ones. Actually, you would have an IE6 style sheet. Yeah. An IE7 one. You know, and then you had you know kind of a catch-all. <laughs> you know, kind of a yeah. It's like um, header files in C plus plus. Yeah. Screw you, Microsoft files. You know, uh, cascading mm -hmm. style sheet. You know, we would name them all kind of things. You know, and then <laughs> finally, you know, finally, about two years ago. You know, it started to be a movement. I, I can remember sitting around going, you know what, I'm not doing this no more. You know, so then we started putting up the little phrases, the little boxes, that, you know, redirects to go, hey, if you're on IE6, get a life. Yeah, you know, get off the internet, get off the web, you know, whatever. But we're not doing this anymore. And that's, I mean, it's been a strong movement. You know, most people don't do it anymore. You know, we, we I don't do it anymore. I refuse. If you're still on IE six, well, no, you don't. You you, you don't do stuff is you know specifically for IE. But what you just brought up is a, is a strong point. That I think that you know if you're trying to host a website or a blog or something like that, well, a mistake that a lot of people, especially people starting out, make is they design it for the particular browser that they're using, right. not taking into account the other browsers. Right. Right. Um, and, and not all the browsers were just up the same. That is absolutely correct. Um, for the most part, you're going to be safe with all of the WebKit-based browsers, which is Safari, Chrome. You know, most of the time, if you build it in one of the, and you're looking at it in one of these, and even even though Firefox is not built on WebKit, it's very close. They'll render just fine. But IE. Internet Explorer and Opera are the two devils that you have to look out for. Opera has been known to butcher a website or two in this day too. You know. But it is what it is. Um, that's just been that's the movement these days though. And also, I like I said, I recommend anyone who's attempting, who wants to get into it, and this is not what you normally do. You're not a web designer, number one. You don't need to play around with hosting companies and this, that, and the other. It's not necessary. You know, start off with a blogger. Start off with a WordPress, hosted WordPress site. If you get big enough where you feel like you, you, you need to expand, you know, go with a non-hosted WordPress site. You know, it's the one that you host yourself. Mm -hmm. That's you know? what I do. Yeah. It's easy. It's very easy. Um, but also, WordPress allows you to do very complicated things. And that's why I love it. That's about two weeks. In about two weeks, I'm gonna put up my golf blog. Y'all gonna read it? Of course. I'm. I'm gonna call it instead of "Go for it, man." It's gonna be called "Golf for it, man." Oh. <laughs> I, I like that actually. I like that. See if like that name's I'm, available. I'm, huh? Hey, go see if that name's available. I don't know. I don't know. Definitely. I'm saying you need to go now and see if it's available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Remember what I told you in the beginning. Every the first, usually your first one gone. It's it just it's just not there. Ooh, looky here. Dot net. Dot com and dot org are all available. Oh, I just bought them. Now I'll sell them back to you for a thousand dollars a piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's the business, man. Ain't that the way it's supposed? Ain't that the way it works? That's the business. Squatters. Oh, Lee's turning into a squatter. Yeah, squatters have made so much money in this business. Mm -hmm. We gotta make money somehow. Yes. So much money in this business. Yes, indeedy. I just picked up Lionel is a genius dot org. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, but you know, you 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 talk you you talk about that, and I, I'm gonna go even a little bit old school while we're, while we're talking about building websites. You remember back when we had to build them that we actually when we actually also had to take into account in some cases people's internet speed before broadband was the norm. Oh, right. Yeah. Where we actually had to design them and take dial up into account, yeah, mm -hmm. and how long it would take it to that. render on a dial up. You put your most important information yeah. first. Yes, and most thing in text. Most of the website was text based. Yeah. <laughs> most of the was in text. You know, <laughs> you know, you were splurging to put an image on that website. It was dynamic. Yeah, that icon. Take that image like ten seconds to, to render. You know? That image, that image better be eight bit graphic. <laughs> it better be. 
10, so, you know, somewhere you, you click on it and you're like you know, a minute later waiting because it's like the, the, the graphic is still trying to render. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, the crazy thing. It was crazy. You know, it see people designing that way. That's the crazy thing. There are still websites. Well, I mean, you, you, actually, in the you would build it on your computer. You build the site on your computer, and then you upload the site to, you know, ultimately where it's going to be, and you're waiting as it's being, you know, forwarded out to out to its ultimate location and being checked. At, yeah, I'm sitting here going, oh, man. I remember I'd start and then maybe come back an hour later to see if the site's uploaded yet when I had to FTP I it. That. I learned HTML from GeoCities. Oh, wow. <laughs> I learned HTML in 1995 mm -hmm. from a 12-page tutorial while in school at Rutgers. And then I went and made all kinds of free money going to companies, <coughs> giving them three pages of just their text and a very small picture. That was from a 12-page tutorial. Mm-hmm. Good job. Awesome. Yeah. I was hustling. Yeah, that's why he was, plays was, golf was now. That that's hustling. exactly why yeah. I play golf now. That's why you've been <laughs> <do> <laughs> Yeah. I went to every company, and they didn't even – I went. I, I swear to you, I went to every company in the malls and in the strip stores uh, and told them, I can build you a website, $200 a page. I can have it done for you in two days. Mm -hmm. I, could actually, I made a template, and I had it done for them in like 20 minutes. But I told him it was two days because that way I could make five or ten different pages at one time. Yep. Boom, bam, boom. And boom, people bam, find boom. Me. Yep. <laughs> boom, bam, boom. Yep. Not bad. Not bad. Yep. And then I remember I, when Scanner. You know what? Some of your sites are still out there. I've seen them. <laughs> I, I've seen I was looking them. at one earlier will. today. <laughs> they probably uh, yeah. Your handiwork still exists on the web. They probably do, man. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, easy peasy. Twelve page tutorial, and then I got into Dreamweaver one, two, three, four, and seven, or oh, wow. CS three, CS five. But now I heard about this WordPress that I'm gonna do my golf blog on. Well, as far as content manager goes, you know, WordPress, WordPress is is probably one of you know, I can't give it the best out there because personally I still think Joomla is a better overall content manager but WordPress has way more variety it's the big dog out there so there's more templates it's more plugins it's more everything but as far as flexibility Joomla well c flexibility and customization yeah. I mean good god yeah Joomla is, uh, to me, Joomla is the one on that end of things. Um, yeah, I agree, even though I haven't played with Joomla too much. I used to live on Joomla. I really oh, like Wissy Wigs? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're basically like Dreamweaver on steroids. Web based. Web based? Yeah, web based. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess I could do that then. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's. You know, you, 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 you would have no problem picking it up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just got to find some time to do it between doing golf, practicing golf, and work. <laughs> yeah, in that order, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. nothing can interfere with the golf. You can tell Phillip's priorities here. I started playing the golf lottery. Golf and work. Well, I found out that there's some country clubs going into foreclosure like we were talking about earlier today. Yeah. So instead of my fifteen million dollar plan, I got a five million dollar plan. Mm -hmm. Buy some country clubs. That's it. And Lee, I know you want to uh, invest in my in my business, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk because I I know one that's very 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 close to me. Um, they're going into foreclosure. They're looking for some investors, but yeah, I'll I'll talk to you about that. Yeah. Well, I really just want to buy four hundred acres and. And make, I want to make the most, the most impossible. He wants, he wants basically a cabin where he can walk out on his front lawn and basically, you know, do eighteen holes on his front yard and then go back inside. And then go back inside. That's it. 
That's it. No, he wants he wants number one to be a five hundred and seventy five yard par five. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> so so what, what are we shooting over there? Which 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 so how how good are you since you Man, put all this time into it? My handicap is probably about well, do you know what handicap is? Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm probably at a six, maybe a seven. <laughs> I know what a handicap is. Sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> today, 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 I, today, I shot I shot a seventy nine, and two days ago I shot a, I scratched a seventy two. Play golf every day. I play golf every day. I play golf. You, you look play at golf himself. every hour. You know, that's I, a, I play that's golf every day. That's a decent handicap. Let me learn on his computer. Pro. Why not semi pro? That's only I mean, a decent handicap. Yeah, five, six, seven. That's a decent handicap. Yeah, semi yeah, pro. Most of the people I play with uh, have a negative two, a minus two. Yeah, and they are. Some of them are. Uh, they got their PGA card, so I was looking at going to Q school. Oh, yeah, you shooting a, yeah, you shooting a. You know. I'm shooting a 70, 75, 76. My worst day is a seventy-eight. Yeah, and that's in the rain. And what's your drive like? Uh, well, I got this new burner. Uh, I have a, I have a ping, and uh, right now. I am shooting about 275 with a 300 on the rollout. Really? You're yeah. 275, really? 275. Yeah, 275. And I'm not even hitting it that hard. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good, man. That's, yeah. Yes, and I'm only using – You hit the green on that 275? I hit the green. Okay. On, I can hit the green on a par four on the first shot. Depending on how long the par four is, I can hit a par five in two shots. I can hit, I can birdie a par five just like that. I birdie two par fives a day. I uh, let's see, I almost got a hole in one on a par three today. Yep, but uh, it was raining today, so so yeah, I, I play all the time. <laughs> that was I lie, I lie at work. See how we in Phil, we in Phil's wheelhouse right now. <laughs> you come so you, natural man. to him. Oh, oh, oh. I used to love, I used to love writing code, but I got into used golf to. and I'm like, yeah, oh. I used to. Oh used wow! To yeah, now, now he's addicted to golf. I'm addicted to golf, man. I'm addicted to golf. I find people who are groundsmen on. I go on Google Plus, and I'll type in a, a golf course that I'm going to go and try to play at. I'll find somebody who works there. I'll become their friend so I can get on there for free. <laughs> 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 yeah, my boy just called me about two hours ago. says, hey, man, I know somebody at Raspberry Falls. Now, Raspberry Falls is $120 a pop. He goes, we can get on for 40 bucks." I said, I got you. We'll go. Yeah. Wow. That's my wife. My, I told my wife, I said, I can have either a woman or I can play golf every day. You choose. Yeah. And she said, go play golf. Yeah. Go play golf. My kids. Well, see, be- you, 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 you mentioned the, you know, the, the, the golf and people addicted to that. And for some reason, I looked up and looked on Facebook and it just jumped out on me, at me. Is what is that that seems to be going around for that Wix, the, that free template yeah. stuff? What's up with people pushing all this stuff so hard lately? All these, these cheap templates. Actually, Wix is a pretty decent um, template based company. They are template based, but they are as as far as as far as that goes, they're they're pretty decent. Um, they stay on top of kind of what's cutting edge out there as far as plugins and what you would want your website to be able to do. Um, the problem with templates are always the same problem with every template is you are limited and restricted by the template and Wix is not a WYSIWYG editor so you can't go in there and 
change things. You know, you can't go into the CSS and necessarily change things. You can't go into the underlying code and change things too much. So that's where the restrictions come in. So you just, you better hope you get a good template and you don't have to manipulate it too much. Because if you do, then you're stuck there. But everybody uses templates. Every, if you're not because using a template, they're, 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 they're bad crazy. templates out there. Yeah. They're bad templates out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. They're bad templates out there. But if, if you're not, and I've ran into a few old dogs. I call them old dogs because that's what they are. I've run into a few old dogs who they still building websites from scratch. Number one, because they're old dogs and they refuse to learn new tricks. And because of it. Well, they build them from scratch and they build them in Flash. Because I, I remember I showed you that one where a guy is actually selling that he's building custom websites in Flash. Yeah. Yeah. Flash? In Flash. No Flash. Flash is, is dying. And, Flash is dead, dude. Dead, pretty much. Uh, that's number one. But number two is you can't build a website that can compete with what you can get from WordPress or Joomla. Yeah. Because you, you, your site is your <laughs> website. We make content management systems now. You know, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's no game. Yeah, you, you can't build that. You know, and if you are building that, you're stupid because <laughs> you don't have to. You know, there are companies out there that are building it better than what you can ever do. So why would you do that? But there are some people out there that are still doing it um, simply because they're scared of WordPress and Joomla. I I've run into some guys that are actual, I mean, these are web guys. These are coders. And they're, they're scared of content management systems. Wow. And I'm like, you guys, I mean, it's, it's, it seems strange, but it's, it's, it's very weird, you know. I can teach my daughter to build a website with a content management system. You know, I, you know, I can teach my, my eight-year-old, you know, and my little kids. I can teach them to build a website with a content management system. Why would you be Actually, I think your two-year-old could probably teach you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Now, there, are some, is, uh, I'm there still, are some difficult ones out there, though. But, I mean, there are some difficult ones out there. You know, we talk about WordPress, and we mostly talk about Joomla, um, but there are literally hundreds of different content management systems out there, and they're not all as easy to use as WordPress. Mm -hmm. uh, even Joomla. Joomla is not as easy to use as WordPress, but you sacrifice, you know, when you have that usability, you're sacrificing power a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Joomla is much more powerful. WordPress well, is... It's much more powerful. And with uh, WordPress, even if you do the templates, there's no um, universal standard. No, and we talk so about... So it's my, like if you... Yeah. Yeah, well, I see, mean, so problem. it's like... The thing ahead, is, Philip. with all this power, it's like having a Ferrari versus a Volkswagen. If you only want your data to be encapsulated within a Volkswagen, you don't need that Ferrari to get you to where you're going. That is well, true. Well, that's you know true. I mean? That that's true. And yet, here's here's necessarily a, a, a problem that I've I've seen, and Corey has uh, also seen it. Is just because you have a template and you think, okay, it's a template, it's going to be easy. There's still some design and psychological aesthetics that go into the design that okay I have a template so I can build it myself so you know you go ahead and do it and then it basically looks like crap right mm -hmm. I've seen people take a, a perfectly good template and screw it up screw by it the up. time it was all said and done and make it look like a MySpace page Nah, MySpace. Uh, no, my, MySpace actually looked good compared to some of the stuff I've seen and oh, already seen. MySpace looked good. Well, we, we talk about this. Um, we, we run into this a lot. Uh, because of WordPress exploded like about two or three years ago. It absolutely exploded. When they went from version 2 to version 3 of WordPress, it became a whole different animal. WordPress did not used to be considered a content management system. It was a blogging tool. Blogging. It was just a blogging tool. That's it. But when they hit version 3.0 of WordPress, it became 
a legitimate content management system. Yeah. It, it exploded. And, and the thing, mm -hmm. uh, what are the things I like about um, Joomla and WordPress is I, I've made a lot of things look like Facebook. You know, we have a lot of. Um, well, I have some sites that I push my information to, so I like the fact that I have RSS feeds for, you know, different content. Mm -hmm. You know, so I know what I'm sending to Twitter, I know what I'm sending to Facebook, I know what I'm sending to Webmodo, and then on all of those, you know, different things, I can issue, you know, different tags depending on what the content is. I, I really like that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and it's like throughout the day, I'm auto blogging. I don't have to worry about a lot of the content that I put out. I can time my posts. I can send my posts wherever I want my posts to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, it is is that powerful, and it's you know, tons of features that I don't even use. Oh, absolutely. You no, know, not even the social networking aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Well, what you love about both WordPress and Joomla and Drupal and a bunch of the other content management systems out there is they're extensible. Yeah. Your plugins, you it creates it has unlimited functionality through the plugins, through the extensibility of it. So simple websites can become complicated websites through the use of plugins. Um, you know also if you know just a little bit about coding CSS style designs. Mm -hmm. You can go pretty far with these particular tools. Now this used to be like hidden knowledge. We wouldn't tell you. Like, you know, I'm not gonna tell you about WordPress. I'm not gonna tell you about Joomla. Because that's, you know, find out like I found out the hard way. You know. I hate people like that, man. Don't I got some people like that at work. Don't you I know you hate that, right? I do. <laughs> I do. But is you know what? It's trade. It, it was at that at that point in time. You know, web design has always been a. It's a rough sport. Oh yeah, it, it's a rough sport. So you kept trade secrets. Secret. It's the same thing with SEO. I started off in SEO. In SEO, it's an unwritten rule. We don't tell you nothing. We will not tell you anything about how we do what we do. It's like the magic game, right? It, it might as well be black magic because we ain't telling you anything. And then what I came to find out is the longer I did it is I can tell you what I do because most people don't, it's not the talent. They don't have the patience. The patience. Mm -hmm. They don't have mm -hmm. the patience to do it. You know, it's, you can learn it, but it does take quite a bit of patience and perseverance to make something look like you want it to look in your head. So it, it, it takes it and then you know you you give it away just like you said here's here's what it is you know we talk about this and this goes back to what we talked about earlier because you know you and I know of some stuff mm -hmm. of here's what we do here's how we do it they they basically look at it and they go okay they can I can do, do this to get I can do this in, in a day yeah. And yeah, you know, and they think that they could do it. They could do something in a day because we can, but you they can. they don't necessarily even go ten years that lead that led up to us being able to do stuff in a day. Right. You can do something in a day. It'll look like you built it in a day. <laughs> no, it That's won't even problem. look like you built it in a day. You'll exactly. build it in a day, and it'll look like a ten-year-old did it. Exactly. <laughs> it's you know, and we've tested this theory many times. You know, we've had clients who's like, oh, you know. Oh, I can do that. Oh, I'm familiar with work. Oh, okay. And then you just wait. You go, you wait, you wait. And they'll they'll, come, they'll back. come back. They're boomerangs. Those people will always come back. If if somebody tells you that I'm going to try to do it, on, I, I'm going to try to do it, you just wait on those people because okay. they come back. And when you know, they come back, you charge them more. Exactly. Well, we, call, we, you. We, we, char we call it the a-hole tax. Yep. <laughs> You get yep. the a hole tax at that point. <laughs> you know? I agree. I agree. <laughs> it is what it is. But you know, I, I don't. I never worry about those people. Those people always they're like boomerangs. If they sit there and they tell you, you know, I think I can do this. You know what? You go right ahead. 
We'll leave the, we'll leave the light on for you. Cause you'll be back. They always come back. Yeah, and I mean, and see, and here's the the other thing. Like we're talking about the web hosting, we're talking about the blogging, we talk about the design aesthetic. But see, here's something that a lot of people never figure into their design. They design stuff that they like. Right. Okay. Oh, oh, I like how this looks. I think this is, you know, well, you know, had one instance with, uh, you know, where what somebody liked was crap. It was just straight up crap. Well, I think this what I would like. I mean, it was they basically wanted you know wanted a design that you know you know, harkens back to like almost 15 years ago of the dial-up. I want all of this text and all of these words, right. and you know I don't want any visual. You know I just want this so people can read. And I was like, I was like, look at this. I, yeah, do you like it? Well, no. Well, why? It's so much too, too much to read. But you want to make yours just like this thing you don't like. People start reading in the early 1900s. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> That's why we don't need textbooks today, right, Shanice? It, you know what? It's, it's the truth of the matter, though, especially on the web. The web has there's – a, there's a rule of thumb on the web. There's a seven-second rule. The seven-second rule is basically your site has to engage someone within seven seconds or you lose them. You lose them. They, they, it's, it's almost a muscle – um, a muscle response, they'll hit the back button. It's, it's you know? ADD. It is Everybody's ADD. got ADD. Yeah. You so know, you and, and see, the, and the awesome. other thing of it is, is to design oh, it in such a way of, because you can do it and it can be too busy. And you yeah, can give people too much info and they'll tune out that way too. Yeah. This is, the, this is what separates professionals from amateurs. Knowing how to design a website that will keep people engaged or embraced and how to how to design different types of websites. You know, I tell people this all the time. Look, you know, designing websites is not it's not hard. But just like anything else, like I grew up playing basketball. I ain't make it to the NBA. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I grew up playing football. I didn't make it to the NFL. There is a level above what the average person will do. And that's what makes you a professional. So, you know, in saying that, most people don't understand what it takes to actually do this professionally and to actually understand before you even speak the words what it is that you, you're trying to do. And most people don't have the eye to design because they're designing based upon what they like, not based upon studies, marketability, you know, 10, 15 years of consultation of knowing how the web works, how people work on the web, how, you know, what color schemes actually, what they mean. You know, a lot of people don't realize well, that colors I, are, you know, psychological. They yeah, have a psychological like, effect on you. You know, they mean certain things. They don't know that, you know. So this is what people pay for when they do web design. You know, they, they you know, we, we don't talk about this too often um, because one of the things is, is, like I said, we was, I was brought up in this particular field that you don't talk about these things. You know, unless somebody's consulting you and paying you to give you, you know, for you to give them this information. You just, we don't talk about it. But I mean, we can talk about it without giving away, you know, some of, of the details because there's, there's just some colors. Yeah. There's just some colors that, you know, you, you, you don't use. I mean, you stay away. I mean, it's like if you go to a website, for example, and, and I could just use this, and it's a hot pink mess. Because they like pink, much like uh, my yeah, or 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 something, you know. Or they basically do it, and it's like we're gonna do this yellow background, and we're gonna use white text. Okay, there's just not enough contrast in that. And first off, it may not render well depending on the displays, but or depending on your age too, it's just gonna be like you know what? That's hard to read. There's not enough contrast. I'm not even fooling with it. There, I mean, it's just, it seems like common sense, but it's not. It's it's not. It's you know this, and I know, you know this very well. Um, you know what I hate the most is when you reach that point where you have to, you just have to build what you have to build a monstrosity just to show people what a monstrosity looks like. You know, where where you can't you can't 
advise them on color schemes because they know too much already. Oh, you know, I, I want this and I, I need it this way. And, you know, this is what my brand, you know, it requires, yada, yada, yada. You know, I need that lime green and that puke, you know, pink, you know, put that together and make it work. And you go, you know what? Yeah. You know, yeah. And, 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 then, and then the fun one is like you, you do a page and every page has a different theme and a different color scheme. Oh my goodness. And you're like, no CSS. Why? No, no, no. no. You, you have it, but this is what yeah. they want. This is what they want. Ugh. You know, this is, I mean, you know. Well, most, listen here, gentlemen. The most difficult you? part about web design development and all of that is the clients. No, would you even the want to put them right. into that work? I Except mean, when they're wrong. They, 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 <laughs> hey, I don't know that I would want to take that contract. We have sites that we've built that we have not put our name to. Okay. Yeah, the third stuff I won't gotcha. put. We will not put our name to. <laughs> you, don't, you don't put your, we'll, your we'll, logo on that oh, one. Yeah, we'll accept the check, but no. we won't put our name. Right. You just don't put your logo on no. that one. No. Not no. Cool. Bye. <laughs> if we're not proud of it, and, and you know, I... I to, personally, it hurts me when I have to put a website out that I don't like. It's, it's actually painful. I can't explain it, but it, it is kind of a painful thing because it's one of those things that you, you as you're building it, it's painful to you. It's like, ugh, is, I hate working on this site, right? You never put your names on those sites. That's you know? what you... You Never. Do, um, you know, a, a little bit up front, and then you just look at the check while you're finishing the site. <laughs> that's that's what you do. You go. You know what? Uh, I'm, I'm I can move on. I can move <laughs> on with this. You know, I've had clients that go. You know, after I built the site, go. You know, you can put your your name or your logo on there, so you know people. Uh, we're good. You know what? No. I don't want, I don't want to take away from you. Bingo. This, this is all about you. You know, I don't want to take anything away from that. Bingo. You know, you know what I used to have problems with? When I used to do a bunch of real estate sites, right? Oh, man. I kind of started out doing real estate sites back in the day. And everybody wanted their picture on the website, right? That was a thing, right? You put your yeah, mug on there. Real estate. It's, it's, it's like this unwritten law, right? You got to put your mug on it, right? And I said, you know what? You know, that was around the time we started doing consulting. And it's like, I used to tell people all the time, I'm like, look, let's, let's just put everything on the table, right? You know, unless you have, you know, a certain face. Word it not, up, baby. <laughs> it's not advisable. If you got a face that's full of fugly, don't get on there looking you know? ugly. <laughs> well, but see, it, it's it's even about that. We talk about you know the the face, but you know even you talk about the, the you know the blog. You know you have people that basically want to write you know because it's interesting to them. You know you have some people like you know I don't I do not have necessarily the most totally engaging personality standalone, but you know technically I, I do okay. But you have people that basically want to do. Stuff about okay. Here's what I breathed today, and oh yeah, I went to answer nature, yada. And this is their blog, and they're like, I don't understand why people aren't reading it. It's like really, you there's why do I want to know about your bodily functions? There's absolutely nothing yeah. interesting about that. Yeah, that's what they do on Facebook all day long. You know, is exactly I don't even have a Facebook, Facebook a lot of times. You know, but you know, you know what I've noticed though, Facebook is changing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It it is evolving into That's something what else. On TV. It, I, you know what I think Facebook will become? It will be just become a personal propaganda machine. You know, seriously. You know, once it gets to a point where employers want your Facebook access, once it that it became works. yeah, there there's some. They already there's, have somebody that are trying to do it. Yeah, they got people that they want to. Why do. I don't have a Facebook page? Yeah. Well. Oh dear. You're forcing me now. <laughs> you you're now forcing me to lie to you. Yeah. That's what you're doing. So now it's becoming my personal advertising tool. You know, I think Facebook is. I, I've no. I've seen it become more corporate. In just the way people kind of 
everybody's pushing an agenda of some sort. Sometimes it's a personal agenda. In my case, I'm pushing political agendas right now. We're all pushing something, you know. And I think that's what Facebook is going to become. More, you're going to see more and more of it. And then I think that's going to just drive people away eventually to go, you know what, I, I need something else, you know. It, it, because it's weird now. You know, right now on my Facebook page, if I go to my wall, it's nothing but political stuff. Mm -hmm. My wall. That's all it is. So, you know, if, you get, if you're looking for a job and the employer says, hey, what's Facebook? Or, hey, let's go to this guy's Facebook and they see all this. Uh, he's a Democrat. Well, we're a Republican coming here. We can't have that guy here. I, I, I don't have Facebook. It, I'm sure it's happening. I'm sure it's happening. Uh, you've seen people already get fired over their Facebook page. Things that they posted to their Facebook page is caused. Oh yeah, people fire. go to jail for that mess. Yeah, teachers have been fired. Um, you know, and it's it's weird that we're talking about this because we're talking about hosting and you know stuff like this. That's the other thing. Um, I think Facebook, at this point in the game, you have a choice nowadays. You don't technically, quote unquote, have to have a website. Some people can get away with using webs uh, using Facebook. Mm -hmm. Using their fan pages. Yeah, their fan page. Yeah, they use their personal account and their fan pages. Yeah. Um, with um, stuff like BigCommerce, which is a shopping cart, BigCommerce actually integrates with Facebook. You can sell things right over Facebook. You know, why do you need a website these days necessarily? You know, some people don't. Some people don't. You know, when we do marketing campaigns for people, we always we always kind of center the marketing campaign around Facebook. Why? 950 million users. It's a lot easier to market to people that's already standing around in the crowd than to try to get the crowd to come over to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just the way the world is, is these days. Me, I, I you know what? Uh, Twelve point ten. Tried it yet? Yeah. Thoughts? I'll go on record as saying um, I'm not impressed. I knew you was going to say that. I'll uh, as soon as the uh, broadcast is over, I'll go into detail. <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. I knew that was coming. Okay, yeah. I knew I wasn't going to like it because... Why did you know you were not going to like it? I, this, I want to hear this. We, oh, we because I've been beta it. testing it for the past couple of months. Okay. But what, and, the bug, and the bug reports I submitted uh -huh. are still there. They're still there? Yeah, I, I, you know, I haven't had any issues. I mean, it's... And uh, this is a personal uh, pet peeve. I don't know if it's a pet peeve or not, just... But if anybody has downloaded or has not downloaded 1210 yet, there's a neat little feature. Um, when you go in and you tell it 32 or 64 bit and you hit next, you come to a screen that asks for a donation. Oh, what? Wow. What does it say? Yeah, it asks for a donation. It's not required. Come on, Lee. Have y'all not seen this yet? I, you know, uh, yeah, I'm right. I'm I, just, I, just, I, just, I just did an upgrade. I just upgraded mine. I didn't, you know, I just did an upgrade. So I didn't, I didn't see that. Okay, now let me ask you this. So you did an upgrade. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you using the stock Unity overlay? Yeah. Do you have an Amazon icon? Yes, I do. So that was not, okay. If you go to, if you go search for something, uh huh. All right. You type in. Hold on. What are we talking about? Because I I wasn't paying attention. Oh, oh, I see. You. ADD. Well, I ADD. What we're talking about? ADD. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Bill was out there asleep. Go to twelve ten. Yeah, I actually oh, okay. to twelve ten real quick. If Sorry. You, uh, about if, you click, if you click on the logo at the top and you search for something, do you get a whole lot of Amazon ads now? I have not noticed that. That 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 I have not noticed. Because I haven't, I haven't done a search in the panel. I do. You know, now, browser let search. me let me say this. I don't know if when you go to download, when you go to download it, mm -hmm. 
and there's a dozen or so options there that you know you can down you can donate ten bucks and say use five for this and use five for this. You know, so I, I like the fact that if you want to give them a donation, you can specify mm -hmm. where you want your money to go, and I'm cool with that. Okay. Please. Please. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Question though. Hang on, hang on. Let, don't let, let me get my let me get my train out. Let me get my okay. let me get my train of thought going here. Go ahead. So I downloaded it and I installed it and I noticed that every time I go and, and search for something, I've got all these Amazon ads popping up all over the place. Now, hmm, did they put that in the iOS ISO because I didn't give them money? And if I would have given them money, would the Amazon ads still be there? Yes. I haven't noticed that. Why did you give them some money, Lionel? No. Well, yeah, I did, but yeah, it'd still be it'd still be there because of they actually embedded it, and their their reasoning behind that, from what I've read, is, hey, we just are trying to make an honest buck here because if you use it, yeah, they get a percentage of everything that you buy when you use it. They're they're trying to you know generate revenue but yeah it's still there I gave him a couple of dollars here's the question I have though I mean seriously seriously they have to make money they have to make money okay so they stuck in Amazon you don't think they're already making money not not a whole you don't lot. think Conical's making money not, not a whole lot not a whole lot I don't think they're rolling in dough, but I don't think they're hurting either. Well, you, you have one thing, okay. Now, the open source community, and this this is what kills me about the open source community. Money is not a bad thing, okay. It's okay to make money, but and this is the same problem that Android is having right now, right? Because a lot of Android users have this very Linux mind state of I don't want to pay for nothing. But it only hurts them in the long run because developers have to go to where the bills are getting paid. Mm -hmm. So it only hurts in the long run to have this mind state of, you know, we don't want to pay for this. You know, we don't want to pay for this. Or I don't want ads or I don't want this. You know what? I hate ads. I don't want no ads on my operating system either. But, I mean, dude, they did this very tastefully. What's the problem? Oh, I don't... What I want, what I'm just trying to figure out is if, let me think, I had a word this. If they did it, if if you don't donate any money, and I think Lionel answered this, but you know it's probably one of those things I'm just going to have to do to see for myself. But you want to see if it goes away? I want to, I want to, I want to redownload it. I want to give them ten, fifteen, twenty bucks, just to see if. So you think there's an ad version and another? I don't know. Version, and they didn't, know. They didn't disclose know. that. Now that would be different. That would be different if no, it had a, you know, because I, uh, and, and number one on the open source guidelines, I don't even think you're allowed to do that. You must disclose those types of things. So I, I don't know, but I mean. However, I did find the uh, I did find the command to run to uninstall that particular feature. So, are you not liking twelve ten basically because of these? No, these it's or? still got it's still got some bugs in it from beta testing that slipped past QA. You think it gets sloppy? No, I just th I don't think. I don't know, and this this is I'm I'm basing this solely on. Are you old school Ubuntu or new school Ubuntu? And we say new school Ubuntu is 12.04 and, and before versus old school, which was traditional known desktop, et cetera, et cetera. Which which side of the fence are you on? All right. You know, I'm gonna have to say old school. That's your problem right there, right? See, I'm yeah, not no, he, he, no, he, 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 he's right. old school because when I was when I was hanging with the, with them the other day, mm -hmm. you know, they, they basically made the statement in, in their um, upstate Carolina Linux. It, it was a joke, but it wasn't a joke. That the whole purpose of the GUI is to, you know, basically get to the terminal screen. Ha, 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 ha. 
Well, why do we even need a GUI? Just boot the terminal. <laughs> <laughs> You know, go to just go into single user mode and be done with it, right? Um, I mean, I can understand that a lot of a lot of people like the traditional. You know what? For Linux users, I'd say this: the jump from twelve point oh four was almost like the jump that we're about to see for Windows eight users. There was, there was a lot of people that didn't like it. And I know why they didn't like it. It, it you know, Linux became more. I hate saying this, but it came more OS ten like. You know, a lot of Linux users it, it, don't like that. But you, see, don't I, like you, just you remember I said world. that when I was comparing, uh, you know, Ubuntu to Mint. Mint reminds yeah. me of Windows, and Ubuntu exactly. reminds me of of Mac. OS ten, yeah. It it, it it did. It 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 just simply did. It came. It became more OS ten like. Your dock is on the side, mine's on the bottom. That's the only difference, really. Well, see, I like you. Know, I, I, I like I like twelve oh four. It's great, but it seems like they took twelve ten and they added some more. Well, you knew where they were going, though. You I know. knew where they were going with it. Once you start down that path, mm -hmm. you know it's 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 UI driven. That's more UI in your face. I mean, this is some serious UI stuff that they're doing over there. If you're an old school user, I can see how this would bother you. I mean, seriously, I knew twelve oh four was a a lot of people were like up in arms about 1204 when it first came out. A lot of people well, thought they see, were going to And then the, the, the GNOME 2 versus GNOME you know, versus 3. 2 is actually better than 3. But I'm not going to go there either. Well, um, I mean, the, the, there's there's not a lot of difference, if any, except for a couple of icons between 1204 and 1210. The desktops are almost identical. It is almost identical. They I mean, 1204, I love 1204. I'm, I'm actually going probably going to wipe my 1210 and go back to 1204. You're going to go back to 1204. I actually kind of like 1210, though, because for me, ironically, at least on the laptop, uh, the 10 is a little bit more stable than the 4 was. Same here. I had a few glitches with, yeah, asked, um, asked with 4 that I'm not having with 10. Yeah. Same here. And I'm running mine virtually. You know, I, I, run, I run, you know, Linux virtually, you know, but I got it running right now, as a matter of fact. 1204 seems very stable. There were some very glitchy graphic issues with 1204 that I'm not seeing in 1210. 1210 actually seems a little bit lighter than 1204 to me. It, it seems like it, you know the code has been optimized a little bit better. It seems a little quicker. Um, there's some things that you know under the hood that seems a little bit better to me in 1210. So I mean, I just want to get your perspective because I know you 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 are primarily a Linux user. You know, um, me I jump in and until I, he goes to work. Yeah, until I, he goes to work, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna end the the, the public part and. Uh, I'll say this for people that want to come and, and watch us next week. Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about it, but didn't really get into it. And Corey said about not giving away secrets, but we'll kind of talk a little bit about them. We're going to do Social Media 101, which kind of means we'll talk about stuff. We won't get too hot and heavy. But um, Yes, we will. It's something. We will. Oh, please. Come on. All right. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you next week.